365 cut. These are the meaningless ramblings of a Scottish redone whore and a pissy ex-video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're gonna need a bigger podcast. Hello, you are listening to the 365 Flicks podcast coming to you from yeah, man. Site A. We are back in Site A. Back in Site A? We're not, we're not crazy. using my shitty spare room anymore. It wasn't shitty. It did the job. Well, it's me. I've got those CD. It can't be shitty. But yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, but it did the job. It was excellent. And, and I'm sure we shall be returning back there. Not when uh, you move again. Fuck that. I'm not moving again. That's no. fine. No, because this has been a, a faffy, a faffy faff. Mm-hmm. And I ain't taking this bad boy down. And when you st- well, it's not coming down. The amount of nails are putting it to be well, right. exactly. But yeah. The, when you start building the back cave, yeah, underneath, yeah. Which I, I don't know if I'll be able to because me and Jamie done an excellent slabbing job. We were le champion slabbers. I'll just say that shit again for the whole night. <laughs> so this is episode uh, seventy-five, though. Seventy-five, yeah. 75. You, you're, like, you're happy with episode seventy-five? You're like, quite, are you not? Are you, are you like? Can you not believe we've got this far? No, it's not that. It's just it's a pretty impressive number, I think. It's a pretty impressive number. I'm happy We're, with it. Hobie just did 176. Fuck Hobie. But, though. you know, it's quality, not quantity, if anything. Well, exactly, so, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they, they wish they were getting our numbers. Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As they keep saying. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's episode 75. It is episode it's, 75. Uh, and, you know, coming soon. Episode what, by 76. By the end of the year? But, <laughs> no, by the end of the year, episode 100. Do you think? Oh, fuck yeah. I don't know, because um, we, we, since the turn of the year, became a weekly show, and then we missed last week. We did. Well, well... Um, what was that all about? Well, the the reason we've got our numbers up is because of Indie Talk. That's not the reason yeah. we do it, yeah. but it helps. Every little helps, as they yeah. say. But, okay, so Indie Talk's taken a little bit of a, a, little bit of a break, and, yeah. you know, we've, we've uh, we had a... a a load of cracking, awesome ass interviews, and thank you, thank you for everybody who, well, allowed us to. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, their lives. It's, it's taken a lot. You've, you're going away on holiday, and we've been yeah. doing different things and all that kind of thing. Um, but it will be back. Don't worry, it will Very be back. We've all, we've all, Christ, fuck me, we've already got like two interviews lined up already. So it's it's not it's not a good good space to be in but, when you've got too many people and you just have to turn them away. Well. We've never turned them away. Well, no, we are we are beating them off with a shitty stick, though. Like, we'll do that, but not turn them away. <laughs> but uh, you know, it will be back in a few weeks' time, so so don't worry. But um, yeah, bas- basically, I'm off on holiday, and um, I've basically had to stop peddling our wares to people who don't want them because I just didn't have time. Well, but we've got a few interviews lined up already, so ones. it will be back. But uh, this episode is just, as Kev says, a regular schmegular <laughs> episode. Yeah. So we'll just be slavering for the next hour and a half. Well, we're going. You're welcome. We're going to start off with some some intro and some top bants, which you don't like, you don't like the word bants. No, but, you know, I do not. It, we, do we reserve that word for millennials? Cunts. Oh well, okay. Nice one. So we're going to be doing all that, and then we have some news, 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 as we usually do. Uh, we are doing our "What have we been watching?" section, which I'll I'll be completely honest with you, my um, viewing pleasures have taken a bit of a backseat as of late, uh, due to my obsession with Minecraft. Fucking Minecraft! Of all things, Minecraft. Ruby asked me to to get it and to teach her how to play it so she could build a house. Has Ruby been on it, or is it just? No, been Ruby's you? not been on it yet. I've been on it mostly, right? Building star destroyers and um, you he, showed me your star destroyer. It's pretty cool, to be fair. It's finished now. Right, it is finished now. I am now um, to say I got myself on Reddit. You know that website? I've never been on it. And uh, I downloaded the blueprints to a World War Two battleship, <laughs> and I started it. You know, you start at the very bottom, you do your first layer, and yeah, wished I didn't bother, because it is fucking huge. Which battleship? Ah. Oh. World War Two is your one. Oh. It's got guns and stuff. All right, okay. And it goes in the water. That's about as much as I know, you know that. Lowers it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that, and then beside it I'm going to build some TIE fighters. <laughs> Just to really, like, you know... <laughs> Get it to where it Just needs to be. Just fuck with the historians' minds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people will love that. They will love that. So, yeah, we have the What Have You Been Watching section coming up in a little bit. 
And then we've got a top five, and you chose this top five. I did. Yeah. Would you like to explain? I, I normally do, five? to be fair. You, you do, because I normally just on the day. Come on, quickly, think of something. Mm-hmm. Whereas and this morning it was think of something easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this top five is uh, top five great movies mm-hmm. that people probably missed. Yeah. Or didn't see. Or well. Or missed. Fucking potato, potato, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that that's the top five coming up later on. But before we get into any of that awesomeness, guess what, people? We've been teasing you for the last few episodes that we were going to be doing the Just the Pilot new section. Oh! And it fell massively flat on its ass. We just kind of forgot a little bit. A little bit, big time. It's fine. Yeah, it tends to happen. So, we did it. We, we we decided that we would um, watch Frontier, which mm. was the TV show that I put forward. So you are going to get your brand new section right now. We're going to do that first because it should have been done about four episodes ago. <laughs> Just the pilot. I need you to find someone. Declan Harp. The man who used to work for the Hudson's Bay Company and now steals from them. Going to the interior to meet Declan Harp may cost you your life. The man cares only about his own games. He's an animal. Killing him is not enough. He must make an example of him. He must make him suffer. Don't fight hard. I'm feeling something bad will happen that sweet little girl of yours. His savagery is precisely what makes him dangerous. It wasn't always this way. You will make him understand my point of view! Let's fucking talk about just the pilot. Now, so, the premise of this was that we were going to watch just the pilot. Does what it says on the tin, like mm-hmm. Ron Seal. And then we were going to decide whether we would keep on watching it, whether we'd recommend it, what we thought of it, uh, all that good shit. And Frontier. Yeah. So when you eventually watched it, as myself did, how did you feel? Meh. Yeah, it was a bit shit, wasn't it? So that was just the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't. It was, it was um, a TV show cashing in on the popularity of The Revenant. The Revenant, Game of Thrones, um, Not Vikings. Really Game of Thrones. No, Vikings but like, a little bit, yeah. But in, in the scale of like trying to do something quite grand. Oldie worldy and, and that. Try, like. Yeah, trying yeah. to cash in on the old period stuff. <laughs> yeah. Period. Um, <laughs> you know, Tom Hardy's taboo and all that. Trying to really get into yeah. that niche. It was pish. Yeah, so it's well, it's it's like the Revenant, as I said. It's mm-hmm. it's based uh, around the sort of world of tra- uh, fur traffickers or whatever the hell they're mm-hmm. called. Um, yeah, how did you get on with it? I didn't mind it. Um, very clearly, it was built around Jason Momoa from the word go. I'm sure he's like a producer on the show as well, because mm. his name was all over the opening credits. So yeah, it's a show for Jason Momoa about Jason Momoa, basically. <laughs> He is fantastic in the in the first couple of, um, first episode that we watched. He was only in like two or three scenes, wasn't massive, but was really lot, can't remember. I was kind of loving him. I, I basically sort of I was watching it, but I kind of spaced out and didn't really. I, I didn't really enjoy it to be honest. There's definitely an audience for it somewhere. It's not me. See, that's the, that's the kind of shit I would normally like. You know, I like I yeah. love Game of Thrones. I love Vikings. I love like the last the Last Kingdom. Yeah. You know all that kind of crap, but no, I, I just I might. You know that the the whole premise of just the pilot was: would you watch another episode? Mm-hmm. Uh, because Jason Momoa's in it, mm-hmm. I might give us a, 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 the second episode a watch at some point. Definitely a good Aquaman choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was I've already got, that was yeah. already a given. I've got faith. But yeah, um, me personally, I will I will not be continuing with that show. It just didn't do very much for me. And um, uh, yeah, nah. no, no thanks. No. Let's just there let, are better shows on Netflix. To let be fair. them have it. Yeah, let the people have it, not us. Yeah, yeah. So, with that said, a very, a very delayed, just the pilot section. Um, bit of an anti climax, if anything. A, a very much so, a bit of an anti climax, because literally I was just like, oh, <laughs> might, might as well watch this. <laughs> so yeah, that is done. Are we, we are going to carry on this section because I feel this section is already off to a winner. It's, <laughs> off, it's off to a good start. We might as well flog a dead horse, so or even get a, a, a dead horse to start. Yeah, well, it's a good idea. It's a good, you know, it's not it's, a bad one. It's uh, sort of letting each other, you know, sort of 
uh, I was going to say explore, mm-hmm. find find new shows and yeah. see if see if they're any good. So I think we will continue on there. with it. I've got one for you. Oh, the show is an Amazon Prime exclusive. Oosh. and it is a show that's well, you know, similar to. Uh, the Frontier was kind of based on The Revenant. This one is actually, literally based on Taken. So what's it called? Taken. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would never have thought Again, that. The, I, I, hon- I honestly thought you were going to see Lethal Weapon. So it's got it's <laughs> got uh, Rolo from Vikings in it. Right. As, as Liam Neeson. As Liam Neeson. Yep. Nice. So Is he a young Liam Neeson? Do we know? Yeah. It's based on his time in like the SES or whatever the fuck he was in. Or special... What do they call it in America? Special set of skills. Yeah, special yeah. services or... Okay. Some are not, just not the SES. In, in America, they call it the... Um, Fake SES. The, the poor man's SES. Yeah. yeah. Aye. Cheap American version of what the Brits do. <laughs> Which is pretty much just America in a nutshell, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. yeah pretty much. So, we will come so back. So, we're going to watch yeah. Taken. We're going to watch the first episode of Taken. I've not seen any of it. You've not seen any no. of it. Uh, we will watch it and we will tell you what we think in about six months time <laughs> no we, we, will, we will try and keep that section alive if it fucking kills me we're going to do another revisit it as well yeah I enjoyed that yeah we'll do another revisit it we'll, we, uh, we well, pro- I might I don't think even go on, go on, you go. Go on. No, no, no no I was going to say I might even try another Twitter poll oh will, will you hashtag it no no well it doesn't count then well it does it was on Twitter and it was a poll okay but yes, mm. we are in the pod cave, the fortress of Potitude, which has been revitalised, renewed. It's got foam everywhere. We have rearranged things. There's more room. I can actually swing my arms now. Mm. I, d- I just noticed that because, like, when I talk, I move my arms a lot, and I'm like, "Holy shit, I can move my arms now." We were pretty, you know, we were squeezed quite close together before. Yeah, we thought it would be best to have everything at the end of the cave. Now we've got everything sort of in the middle of the cave, and it means if anybody wanted to join us. They could easily fit Uh around our table. Exactly. Yeah. So that's great. So when next time Paul comes in, we won't be the three of us on crappy little chairs, sitting all hunched together, talking about, I don't know, Die Hard and John McLean. Fuck off. (laughs) With that, let us move straight on to the news. Uh start go on then start as you know i uh, i work for a, a company that i was doing deliveries for uh, i'm not allowed to say the name because i might get sued probably not but i might and uh, this isn't really news but did you know that we have a boar spunk farm in the berwick area what yeah we we have a boar spunk farm boar Boar spunk. Boar, you know, like male pigs and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, we got a boar spunk farm in the area. I, I got asked to go out with another lad who was de- delivering to sort of like technically show him the ropes, but really just sit there and do nothing. So we, we went out and we were coming up on this farm and it was like quite state-of-the-art like um, units and stuff like that. And we're looking at it thinking, oh, it's pretty tidy. And we got up there and there was a white sign on the side of a silo. I bet it was white. It, it, no, it was very white. And it was like a half a silo. And on the sign, it said semen collection unit. Oh, it was a silo full of boar spunk. Yeah. <laughs> so you know me, you know me. I thought I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to this door. So we went up to the to the door and all that, and there, this young young lass opened the door. Uh, probably the world's best girlfriend, from what she told us. Did it look like she had a strong arm? Very strong arm. Yep. <laughs> and she um and she just she came there and I'd seen the sign. She knew I'd seen the sign, I knew I'd seen the sign, we all knew the sign was there. So you know you know me. Did she try and cover up but you'd already seen everything? No, 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 she didn't even try and cover up. Bless her. <laughs> but you know you know me. I was kinda stood there and I was like I'm gonna have to ask, what exactly do you do here? So she told us that they sell pig semen or boar semen as as it goes. And you know me. One question leads to another. Stood there, little cheeky grin coming across my face, and the lassie did look at me and go, go on then. And she knew I had another question. So how do you get it? Was my next question. To which she answered, she just grabs the knob and starts pulling. Now that's not how they do it. 
apparently apparently there's like a machine involved in, in a fake female pig to give the boar the horn but basically yeah there's a boar spunk farm in the Berwick area brilliant yeah I feel a bit sick I know, right? <laughs> I thought it was awesome. And don't bother going on Google Maps, because I did, and they haven't updated no, I, it in I'm years. not going to go on Google Maps for it's that. It's just a big green field right now, because I went on and had a look. But they haven't updated it. So, But yeah, Caliburn Farm. Probably shouldn't say that name. But <laughs> that is a, a genetics um, unit for wanking off pigs. Lovely. Yeah. I just want to let you in on that one. I don't really know what to do that with that information, to be honest. So with that, let's get on to the news. Yeah. Well, this bit of news is also going to make you feel sick. Alicia Silverstone wants to do more Batgirl. Ew. I know. Uh, we'll we talk about Boar Spunk again. In the Joss Whedon, Whedon movie. I don't know. She just says, I think I would do a good job of going back to Batgirl. As what? Batgirl? Mm. No. 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 No, no. Alicia. Fuck off. Yeah, um... Loved you in that that original time you played it a little bit, not much. Really, uh, seriously. Uh, hi, we discussed on the last. No, we episode, discussed Arnie on the last episode. Not I, I that. also she was fucking awful. I also discussed that I thought that Batman and Robin was a better movie than Batman Forever, so she must have done a better job than Jim Carrey. In my well, maybe no, that's a bit that's stretching. That is stretching. No, that's a bad idea. Joss Whedon's not going to have that. No, no. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Didn't we? Didn't, ooh, as Batgirl. As Batgirl. Probably not. I would watch that. I still, I'm still secretly hoping out that, uh, holding out hope that it's gonna be Anna Paquin from uh, was it Anna Paquin from True Blood? No, I always get them two mixed up. Jenna Malone, the one who was in the uh, Ultimate Edition of Batman vs Superman, she was like the one that helped Lois Lane figure out where the bullet came from. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, she there was there was rumours she was in it. As a pivotal character, pivotal main character, and then those scenes got deleted because you know Zack Snyder. Um, they got deleted. Warner Brothers. Warner I'm Brothers. Blame yeah, that more yeah. than Zack Snyder. And uh, it fit, they fell by the wayside. It would be nice to think that that could be a little connection where it turns out she is actually the Oracle and she is Batgirl. Would be would be nice. They're not mm. going to do it. I still want Rosario Dawson. I know it's not going to happen, but I still want. Rosario she would be Dawson. good. She would yeah. be good. Is she not doing it in the um, in the animated film, the the Lego Movie? I'm sure she's. I have no ba- idea. I've seen in it. the Lego movie. Yeah. I have no idea. I'll have to check my facts on that. I would like Rosario Dawson to play. She'd be good. Well. She'd be yeah. good, and she's she's tidy. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's yeah. Don't yeah. don't. I've got a direct like a Joss, as you know. I'll just have a word. I think you should. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to bring things up a little Ooh, bit, right? Because you two got so far down with well, the Alicia Silverstone push. Was that which story was worse? Poor Spunk or Alicia Silverstone? Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring things up a little bit because this weekend and for the next four or five days, two two of the uh, friends of us, uh, friends of the show, uh, people who've been on the indie talk, Tom Patton, Payton, and Cos Greenup mm-hmm. are over in Cannes for the next few days, yeah. for the next week or so, um, pimping out Redwood. Which we did you see the photo that Mike shared last night? I think it was. Was it with all the people waiting in line? Yeah, man, yep. they they're in for a treat. They're in for an absolute treat because we we saw the movie. Um, I don't think we're allowed to officially give reviews or anything yet. Or we we can say it's good, but that's about it. Because it's we, Mike's story and it's good. We kind of that tap danced around it in yeah. the interview. But yeah, so um, he's over in Cannes with Redwood trying to get that movie out there and get people to see it. I know it's going to do brilliant. It's going to do fucking fantastic. And I think I, I saw on Facebook this morning, Mike had something about being in an airport going somewhere. So I'm assuming Mike's on his way over there. Mm. I'd imagine he is. Because, you know, it's his I film. I assumed he was there last night. It's his film too, isn't it? It's his film too. So he's well, got to yeah. be there. And I saw um, Craig, who was the assistant director on the movie, yep. who is a future indie talk. He's already signed up. He's definitely coming on. We just have to. Is that what people do now? They sign up. Oh yeah. Oh. We just have to clear the questions with the powers that be, <laughs> and then once they're cleared, you know, basically. Um, Is that like what real interviews do? B- basically, Nick from The Sopranos, <laughs> who was sitting at the side shutting that shit down. <laughs> I just like saying that. But yeah, so we got to clear those questions, and then Craig's coming on. He's over there right now, mm. uh, taking his trademark picture, those trademark shorts on, which you know. I saw it before. Fair play. <laughs> if you're going to be in cans with all the celebrities and whatnot. 
but also Cos is over there with the Dark Beacon mm. trying to get so that see, movie out there as well Premier and his Dark Beacon as well I don't know I don't, it, it didn't say well I'm assuming so They'll be, it'll be getting shown because mm. he's, he's trying to sell it isn't he or he's trying to get it like distributed right I, I don't know how they fucking do it I'm not a movie person I just like watching them for fuck's sake <laughs> But yeah, he's over there trying to get out, so I'm assuming there'll be a premiere or it'll be shown, and that's going to do great as well, because although we haven't seen it, we have all the faith in the world in cause. We've seen trailers. Oh, the uh, trailers are great. Like cheeky teaser trailer and the actual trailer, and it looks damn good. Plus, we, we saw Wandering Rose, a.k.a. Demon Baby, a.k.a. Child of Satan, a.k.a. You know, I haven't seen that because I had a look for it on Sky and I couldn't find it. Yeah, it's probably called something different. Mm. <laughs> the powers, the powers that be probably well, changed. You can the search name. for a director. You can search for actors. Can you? You can definitely search for actors. I'll have a look. We'll do. I'll it. Have a look. Yeah. yeah. So they're both over there. And yeah. Good luck to that. Um, yeah, people man. are going to love Redwood. A little bit disappointed that they didn't bring uh, their go-to podcasters with them. Well, maybe mm. next year. Maybe next year. I think we would do well in cans. Definitely. Well, it's called can or can or. So you've already fucked it. See, I like cans. I prefer cans to can. Cans. Yeah, it's France, though. It's called can. Oh, God. Is it France? <laughs> I think it's the Can <laughs> Film Festival. I ain't going if it's French. Stupid idiot. Is it full of French people? Well, you would assume so. Eh, uh, bonjour. All that. Mm. Pommes frites. It's can. It's can. Right. So, yeah, they're over there. And as we know, many, many, many fantastic movies have come out of there. That was where Pulp Fiction kind of got noticed and became what it mm. was. It's where Kevin Smith broke Clerks and basically broke his entire career. So, you know, it's a fantastic place to be. And I hope those guys do fantastically well. Over I'm sure there. they will. I'm sure they will. And, yeah, it'll be good to speak to them again after yeah. they've done Cat. Aye. And and you know what? There's a lot of a uh, lot of articles coming out for Black Sight. You know, a lot of uh, information being distributed about the place. So yeah, I saw that on on Nerdly. I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe we should get him uh, back on for a cheeky little crack. Definitely. So anything else? Yeah. So I'm gonna take it down again. Oh, King Arthur is not doing very well. King Arthur. 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 I can't do accents, you know that. King Arthur. You slag. You slag. Is expected to take 150 million loss. I was going to say, because that sounds like a, a bit of an overestimation for Takens. Mm. There's no way they're making that much. Uh, no, it's expected to lose 150 million. So what does this mean for the um, the planned six movie shared universe? I think that's fucked, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was fucked as soon as Guy Ritchie signed on. <laughs> You know, like, I, I kind of feel bad for Charlie him and them and them. A little bit. Because, you know, he's a local lad. You're like, I'm not, I, I didn't like Pacific Rim. Hated it, in fact. I've not seen him in any, I've never, I, I couldn't get away with Sons of Anarchy. But yeah. still, you don't, you know, that was like his big, you know, his sort of first big movie as a, as the lead. Because he wasn't really the well, lead in some uh, thing, was he? Did he not turn, um, he was in... He was going to be in the Fifty Shades movie, wasn't he? Originally, and then he I'm turned that down to go to to do King Arthur. I thought that's what he turned well, it down for. To be honest, I think I think I would still rather do a Guy Ritchie movie than that pile of fucking arse. That's, yeah, I, I get that, but you know, at least if you're making Fifty Shades, you've got all these women, you know, cooing over you. I think they probably still will be. Yeah, when but, he's when he's like, "Oi, Guinevere, you slag." Oi, Excalibur, get over here, you slag. But the trailer does not look good at all. I just have got no interest in seeing it, which apparently no one, neither does well, anybody appar- else. Apparently not. It's not I think it's it only not. made 14 million in its opening weekend. That's bad. But then you're opening it, what, two weeks after Guardians 2? Yeah, could have been a better time. What are you with. thinking? I still think that was maybe like one of those ploys, like, you know what, at least if it does bad, we can blame it on Guardians 2. So no. I'm want no, no. Uh, I'm wondering if that will now scupper the the Aladdin thing. Hopefully, because we need something to scupper. He's that. a little bit, for want of a better word, toxic at the moment. Do you think it would be like um, a, a bad boy yardy version of Aladdin oh. as well? So he'd be a right little rebel. He's he'd gonna no- well. He'd be no. He'd you know what? I read a description of King Arthur, and it was um, yeah, Arthur is like a. 
what is it? A, 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 cockney a young... Wide, a cockney-wide boy. Yeah, something along those a lines. A bad boy Yardy. Fuck off. No? No. You didn't want to watch a bad boy Yardy King Arthur? I did not. He's a rude boy. You didn't want to watch that? No. But yeah, that, that's enough no. King Arthur. Fish. I'm glad it's dying on its ass, to be honest. <sighs> so yeah, we have got some Judge Dread news. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Urban has been in talks with the producers. Nothing concrete yet, nothing cemented. He's only been in talks with the producers of the TV series, which I think is fucking excellent. That is good. Sign that, that mofo up right now. Definitely. Make your series. Just you're not. Gonna, he's, they're clearly not going to get another film. That's. I mean, I don't think it's ever been 100% said that that's not happening, but it seems like it's 100% not going to happen. No, that's never going to happen. So, I mean, maybe maybe if they did the, the Netflix thing and then it yeah. took, took off as it should have done, mm-hmm. maybe then they might do a, a Dread 2. You would hope so, but Possibly, all I'm, I'm going to say on that is... Um, Adi Shankar is, you know, I love him. I constantly big him up. Uh, I'm all about Adi Shankar, the guy that did the bootleg Power Rangers thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He um, he also did an animation for Judge Dredd. It was like eight episodes long. Each episode was about six or seven minutes. It wasn't long. It was just an animation thing, but it was fucking good. It was fucking brilliant. If you want somebody to come and write Judge Dredd right now, mm. Adi Shankar. The thing is, if you're doing a Netflix show, yeah. Then you've got more time if they do it, maybe exactly. like say the same length as your Daredevil. You've got thirteen episodes to build up people's knowledge of the character, uh-huh. and then you might have more, you know, people being more receptive to a movie mm-hmm. in five years' time or something like I that. I hope so. I hope but so. the the guy, I did read that article as well, and the guy is apparently desperate to get Carl Carl Urban back. Well, it sounds like he wants and to do it. Obviously, Carl Urban so loved playing the, the character because exactly. he's been trying to get a movie made for the last, what, he's been five, six years. Aye. So, you would hope it would come together. Yeah, I think I think it will, and I hope we're going to get, I think we're going to get a good, uh, a good Dread series. Looking forward to it, and uh, just, just sign them up. Just sign them up yeah, now. Just, just make it happen. 100% has to happen. Speaking of Netflix. Oh. Yeah. And gaming. Okay. There has been confirmation that a Witcher TV series is being made yeah. by Netflix. I thought this might uh, make you happy. Oh, I'm fucking I've, made up. I personally never played any of the Witcher games, but I know you did, and I know you're all about that. So, yeah. Um, I didn't play the first two. I played Witcher 3. Yeah. But I loved it. It, would, it. If they did it right, it could be so damn good. Is it not something that could be too big, though? Like, too big for a, a series, or...? No, no, I don't see why. No. Game of Thrones it. Uh, well, that seems to be the answer for everything, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just Game of Thrones it. No, but Game of Thrones is an epic show. Yeah. And you don't get people saying Game of Thrones is, is too big for a TV show. Well, not because nobody ever fucking moves. They just stay where they are. No, they s- fucking don't. Shut up. Seven fucking series. And then when they do start to move, they have to go back for some strange fucking reason. I'm looking that at you, Daenerys. One person did that. One Daenerys, person. I'm looking at you, bitch. Best move your ass. Get to King's Land and, and and start the fucking beef. Well, she's on the boots now. So she's on the boots. She's on the boots. You know what? She's on the yurt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but you know, obviously, uh, if they've got some some Netflix money and all that behind them, and they they did it right, it mm-hmm. could be bloody good. Could yeah, really I'll give good. you that. I'll give you that. And Netflix. Let's be honest. You can't fucking turn around without Netflix being on something. Like the the name is all over the place yeah. right now. They're making all these originals, all these original documentaries, TV shows, movies. It's fucking insane. A little bit too much, you might you might no, say. No, no, no. Because I can't watch them all. That's a good point. To be but fair, then... to be fair, I don't want to watch them all. But if I did, I can't. No, that's true. But you don't have to watch them all at once. Well, that's that's the beauty of Netflix, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Pace yeah. yourself. Pace, pace yourself. I like it. I like it. Not piss yourself. Pace yourself. <laughs> I was watching a, a video about it on the YouTube earlier on, and they suggested this might not mean anything to you because you've not played the game, but they they said this uh, this actor's name for the role of Geralt, who's the main character of The Ooh. Witcher. Uh, do you know who I mean? Do you know no. the character? No. The one with the blonde. The, the, Stephen the, Lang. The white hair. Stephen Lang, the actor. St- Stephen Lang. The guy from Avatar. Fuck off. Okay. No, Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, I, I can actually, I can see the cover in my head, and yeah, I could see that. 
I could see that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When when the when I was watching that video and they said that, I went fuck yeah, yeah. That'd be Plus good. He's, he's fucking good anyway. So well, yeah, he, he, is, Michael, he is good. Like yeah, he is mad. So. What else you got? Yeah. So um, the net nerds are at it again. I'm just just gonna put this out there. Mm. The, the net nerds and um, so um, the spilling. Uh, I'm gonna have to read this out because I've written this so fucking eloquently. <laughs> so uh, the net nerds are at it again with more hatred and bile being spewed after it was revealed that Justice League is undergoing scheduled reshoots. <sighs> scheduled fucking reshoots, people. However, this means that the whole movie's getting revamped three times over. This means it's a pipe and hot fucking mess. And to the point where some people, some people, right, are saying that Billy Crudup has left the Flash. He was, uh, he was slated to play Barry Allen's dad, Henry Allen, okay. in The Flash. I like Billy Crudup. He played Dr. Manhattan in, um, in Watchmen. Good actor. Love him. But the people are like, oh my god, he's left the Flash. He's worked out. It's a fucking mess. You know, but dude, he was in the fucking Justice League trailer. You know, like, what is, is that what they're going to reshoot? They're going to take him out of the Justice yeah. League? But it's all scheduled reshoots. Like, this isn't anything new, as we know, as we've always said, big blockbuster movies, especially huge tentpole movies, go through reshoots. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, they do screenings and they get feedback from the screenings and they say, oh, that, could that scene be a little bit lighter? Mm-hmm. Could you say that a little bit differently? You know, stuff and things. It's not... Now, I, it's, now my hope, and this is my hope, because I was, I was thinking about it, right? And when Batman vs Superman got made, uh, apparently Warner Brothers thought Snyder's version was too long and it needed some scenes taken out, mm. right? So that happened and it pissed a lot of people off because according to them, the movie didn't make any sense and it was a pipe and hot mess. It fucking wasn't. It was brilliant. And then the DVD, the DVD and Blu-ray comes out in which Snyder gets to release his ultimate edition in which he puts everything back in it becomes the Batman versus Superman he initially had in mind. Mm. And, by the way, last week announced officially in the top 50 Blu-rays of all time. Yeah, I saw you Sold, which is, which is fucking immense, considering people don't like Batman versus Superman. It turns out they kind of fucking do, idiots. So, yeah, all the edition <laughs> comes out and it's doing that well. I would like to think... And I, I'm hoping on hope that this is the case, that it's not Warner Brothers saying, go back and change this, fuck that. I'm hoping that they're maybe seeing the trend with the Blu-ray, they're seeing how well the Ultimate Edition's doing, and they're saying, you know what, Zach, you had that in mind, go back and put it in. I'm hoping, it, yeah. it might not be, it might not be, I'm probably hoping on hope, and, you know, Dev's probably sitting there right, writing a fucking Twitter tweet as, yeah, as we Dev. speak, you know. All this, all this releasing the Ultimate Edition thing is pissing me off, though. It, it pisses me off as well, because when you saw the Ultimate Edition of Batman vs. Superman, it's like, why the fuck did they not put that in the cinema? Mm. You know, because... Well, it's a superior movie. It's it's a better movie, it's a more coherent movie, it, it's just a fucking great movie. And a lot of people said that, who went to the cinema, didn't like it, watched the Ultimate Cut, did like it. You know, a lot of people went, went back on what they were saying, a lot of the hatred died off. Well, uh, I, mean, you know, I, so. I enjoyed the the theatrical cut I, I, still, I did enjoy it. it but there was more of the stuff that I enjoyed yeah and the, the you know one of the gripes that I had at the time was where the fuck is Clark Kent yeah and you got Clark Kent Clark Kenting yeah in there being being like a journalist yeah and exactly getting his fucking groove on and all that you know that's what you know that's what they put back in and I'm, I'm hoping that the, these reshoots is like you know what Zach you wanted to do that just fucking do it and let's mm. see what happens. I know hopefully, it's. I know it's not going to be that because Warner Brothers, bless them, they just love getting in there and get their hands dirty and rip things apart. But I mean, I'm still looking forward to the Justice League. Um, I've I've got the date down. I can't remember what it was offhand. Uh, 17th of November this year. It's still coming. I'm still looking forward to it. Can't wait for it. And I'm pissed off that the net nerds are getting fucking annoyed. They just seem to. Like creating shit for they do, don't they? They the they DCEU. love it. It's weird. They I, love it. Don't understand it. I mean, even um, even John Campier this week on Facebook has been defending some of the comments he's been making. 
because you know John Campier. He uh, does reviews on Collider. He used to be on AMC Movie Talk. Now he's on. He does Collider. That's his own like little baby. He's got all the YouTubers that do the reviews and all that. They all kind of work for him a little bit. Okay. Well, um, he normally normally comes a little bit down the line with it. Like he's sort of like he likes his Marvel, but he likes his DC when DC do things right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the net nerds again. If he defends DC, he gets called a DC lover and he's been sucking DC's cock and all that. If he slates DC, he gets called a Marvel whore. You know, you, you can't win. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's actually a damn good reviewer. He's one of the few reviewers out there that I still like to listen to. Because he can find positive in shit. You know, if it's there to be found. And he's, he's a fucking good reviewer. I like him. I do like him, but he's getting a lot of shit right now. But anyway, enough of that bollocks. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Sequel. Confirmed. Confirmed. Nice. Brilliant. Mm. I love it. <laughs> First one's not out yet. Sequel confirmed. You'd fucking hope so. Y- you have to think that they're, they're happy with this I movie. think they're... I really do think that they're... F- they're they've f- that they're positive about this one. Do, that you, do you think... That this is why we're not seeing as much TV spots, as many trailers. Maybe they've learned the lesson from Batman. But there are TV spots and trailers. There are TV spots and trailers I mean, to be found. Maybe not saturated to fuck like you know other movies. But remember when BVS came out, there was trailers everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Amazing Spider Man two proportions, <laughs> but there was trailers everywhere. Everybody was getting hyped for this movie. I kind of, I'm kind of hoping, I'm kind of thinking that maybe Warner Brothers are a little bit fucking cocky about this movie right now. So it's like, you know what, let's not let's not oversaturate the market. Let's let the film come out and people can go and see it and they'll go say, ha! Fucking asshole! Remember what you said about BVS, you fucking prick? Maybe. Remember maybe, what you said? Maybe, like, um, <laughs> if... Uh, if... Maybe they're thinking, you know, if people come and say, oh, that movie was beyond shite. Mm-hmm. They've got the ace in, in their deck as, oh, you're total sexist. <laughs> Yeah, especially, especially with all this like gender neutral shit. Oh, don't and all fucking that start with that bullshit. All this wank that's going on, but yeah, um, it's confirmed. Wonder Woman two has been confirmed. It is happening. However, your Batgirl movie that you were talking about before, mm. that's coming first. Right, we're getting that before Wonder Woman and before Gotham City Sirens. So do you think this has been moved be forward? Connected? I don't know if it's going to be connected, but it seems to have been... Same universe, though. Yeah, Batgirl's going to be in the same universe. It's the same universe, but it seems to be, like, the Batgirl movie that Joss Whedon's going to be working on for the next few years. There's a good chance we're going to get this movie next year, Mm. which would be fucking awesome. But quick, maybe? No, no, no. Like like you say, the man was burnt out from from Avengers and all that. Maybe maybe he's just got this fucking passion back. Maybe it's like, this is a project I can get in on. It's not... It's not the big tentpole movie of the DC like Avengers was. Yeah, he's not yeah. exactly doing justice. It's League. like your sort of like your Ant Man. It's his Ant Man or your it's... Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's, it's one of people those aren't movies. Watching it as as closely as like a Civil War. C- can but, we? You know. Can we? Can we dare to dream that he's going to knock this out of the park? And oh, back? Joss will knock it out of the park. He will. I'm and any so. any fucker who slags off <laughs> Joss Whedon's Batgirl. And says it's a pipe and not mess. I'm fucking. I'm going like you. I'm going in a Kev mode. Well, it can't be. I'm getting my fucking keyboard out. <laughs> you keyboard terrorist. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, that's DC news. We're, we're, I'm, I'm happy with what DC is doing right now. Um, Wonder Woman's June the first. I'm really looking for, forward to yeah. To that cinema trip out. for that definitely. Hundred percent. Shit, June the first. I think it's June the first. Chris, that's wow. Maybe maybe in America. We, I don't think it's that that soon for us. I think you might be wrong. I think we might get it before <laughs> the Americans. You know. Well, we'll find. Um, we'll find. Well, out. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, while I'm looking for that, I'm going to try and do two things at once, which doesn't always oh, work. It doesn't. Marvel related. Oh. Uh, there is a uh, a news story that I read about mm. uh, from I think it was Austin, Texas. A guy took a lassie on a first date to see Guardians mm. Two. And she was texting, which is fucking annoying, isn't it? She was texting. You'd know. Although you you don't do that, to be fair. But um, she was texting the entire way through the movie. Oh. And so, when they got out of the movie, 
he asked her for the $17 back for the ticket. Good Fucking lad. right. Good lad. And uh, she refused. Yeah. So she, he is suing her. Yeah. That's amazing. That is that is fantastic. That's like, yeah. That's every man's <laughs> dream. You just get to sue her. Get your money back. It was a shit first date anyway. Get your money back and be done with her. We are getting it sort of back to Wonder Woman. We are getting it on June 1st and the Americans are getting it on June 2nd. Oh, well. So, yeah. Yeah. So moving on. Yeah, from, but uh, I, I love that story, and also, also uh, James Gunn. Yes. Must have uh, retweeted it or, or commented on it on Twitter and said, "Fuck that, she deserves jail time." <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I love him. He's great. He, he is good, yeah. isn't he? They've definitely got the right person for that. Yeah. And 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 I want you know, I'm hoping they don't go down the route of um, with James Gunn, sort of like you know what he's he's had this he's had that massive. Uh, success of Guardians. He's got the. I, I mean, Guardians Two is doing really well so far. I've still not seen it, but it's doing well. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it it's, and it's, what you've been watching, but I'll not tell yeah. you too much. But but it is doing well, and I, I hope they just keep him away from the doing what the Russo brothers did and giving him the franchise and just let him let him just. Well, he's he's been confirmed for Guardians Three. Yeah. So. Yeah. What are you doing that for? That'd be good. I don't know. Nolan. Did three Batman, third one, not yeah. as good as the first two. But it's that's different. I know, I know. That's different. John John Favreau. No, it's, it's different because to be fair, to the Dark Knight Rises, you know everything went to fuck when he oh, Ledger died. It was died. destined to fail. Yeah. So bless Nolan, he tried his best. I still can't watch it. It's just shit. Why not, Chris? <laughs> What's your beef with Batman? I kind of do it. That's sounding more like Santa Claus, to be fair. I'll, put, I'll go and put my mask on. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> but it's different. The circumstances are different. Yeah, yeah. So, shut up. So, D- DC, on to a little bit of Marvel. Let's stick with the Marvel. Let's stick with the mouse, the, the, the house of mouse. Disney is being held for ransom right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, question you've not you. said which film. It's Pirates. It's, it's Pirates. It's the new Pirates. Right. Question for you. Mm. We have been known to to sometimes pick up a movie uh, on the on the not so legit, you know, the Wolverine Oranges back in the day when it got leaked. <laughs> yeah. Could you personally give a fuck about watching a leaked version of Pirates? No. No. <laughs> no. Just let it leak. It's not going to do any harm. I mean, I do want to see the new movie. I think. Yeah. I've seen a couple of trailers, and I think it looks all right. Nah. I do want to see it. I'll, I'm not. I'm not going to cinema to see it. I'll. You know, yeah. there's, there's there's a fuck ton of good movies. Watch it for free. Coming. You know, in the, in the next few months, and that's not going to fit in no. there. I just they they're not paying. They're, they're not going to pay the ransom. They're they're standing firm. They do not negotiate with terrorists. You know, it's quite funny Disney saying that, isn't it? But yeah, they don't they don't negotiate with Why terrorists. Is that funny? Because they're like the big bad evil of the world. The big bad corporate evil. They're like, you know, they, they, they bought... No, that's Apple. They bought Star Wars and they bought Marvel and, you know, they're just trying to assimilate everyone. Yeah, they're doing good with it, though. They are doing good, basically because they're letting them get on with it. I think it. they're just lulling people into a false sense of security yeah. and then they're going to start putting, you know... Be the apocalypse next. Like, subliminal sh- subliminal sh- mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Swastikas all over the place. Uh, yeah. Maybe not swastikas. Maybe not, but ISIS flags... Oh, is this? Bit of is this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, they're, they're, being, they're being held for ransom. Um, what the fuck is Bitcoin? Do you know what Bitcoin is? Because apparently uh, this is this is what they're being it, this is what they're being held for ransom for. Like these hackers want Bitcoin. I'm assuming it's like digital money. Did you yeah. digi money? Digimon? Pokemon? I don't know. I'm I assuming really it's know. something. But fucking Bitcoin. That sounds shit, doesn't it? Can, what's wrong with people going we want one well, that, billion dollars that, that's what I had in my head it was like that scene in uh, Austin Powers when it's like when he's going I want one million kajillion fajillion and then Eddie goes yen like is that what bitcoin is it's just yen like it means fuck all I don't I really don't know what it means I've heard of the word I'd, I'm not aware of what yeah. it means fucking millennials but yeah <laughs> does Disney are refusing to pay and I say good on them don't fucking pay up you know, what's the worst that could happen? People are still... Movies are still coming out in the cinema that are leaking 
days and weeks in advance and they're still breaking a billion in the cinema. Does that happen a lot? I've, I've never oh, heard of that right. happening. It's, it's, it still happens a lot. Like right. mo- Movies still come out well before they're meant to. Well, not not well before. The, I mean, when you come up to like um, Oscar season and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's synonymous for, like, everything just leaking, you know. Anything that's in the best picture category is up for grabs months before it comes out. Although most of them, it's like... Meh. Shut up. What? But, yeah, we love, what? The, we, are, we love the Oscars, just not La La Land. But then, apparently, they don't like La La Land either, because they give it to them and take it away! Yeah. That was still funny. What do you think that was actually genuine? It was actually going to them, and the, the producer went, I'd love fuck to th- that. I'd love to think Jimmy Kimmel just stood there and thought, nah, not happening. <laughs> not on my watch. Because, he, you know, he's a pretty cool dude. Do you have anything else? Yeah, I've got a couple of bits. A uh, few, f- few shows, well, there's been quite a lot of shows being cancelled and renewed and all that. A couple that I want to mention. Uh, Designated Survivor, which is on Netflix here in the UK. I think it's on a it's on a channel in America, but I'm not sure which. Yep. That's been given a season two. Yay. It's Kiefer Sutherland's new show. Jack Bauer in a bunker. Jack Bauer in the White House. In the White House. Yeah. It is very good. I am enjoying it. And yeah, I think you would too. I watched the first two episodes on the plane coming back from America, and and I was enjoying it. I just I've never got back to it since we came back. You should give it a go. You should definitely I'm, I'm give gonna, it a go I'm gonna, because I'm it's gonna. it's for me anyway. It's one of those shows that's been getting. It's like it's found its feet now, mm-hmm. and so it, it's been going from strength strength to strength. So. I am happy that it's gotten a season two. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been given a season five. Yeah, everybody's getting on the bandwagon with this right now, aren't they? People are saying that this is getting stronger and stronger. Well, it is. It's not a bandwagon. If you actually watch the fucking show, you'll realise that it is. Yeah, last time I watched it, it was a mess. It was crap. Yeah, well, you keep on watching it and you give it a go. What, four seasons in? Yeah, but you, you've, you're fucking four seasons in and you're enjoying it because it's gotten better, you stupid bastard. No, there, no, I got three seasons in and it wasn't getting better. It was. And then I read that Ghost Rider was coming into it and I was like, oh, fuck that noise. Ghost Rider was good and fuck you. Uh, <laughs> another one, this one was actually, as far as I was aware, was cancelled. But it's been given a season two. Yay. It's The Exorcist. Yeah. Ooh. That first series was quite good. I really enjoyed yeah. it. I was, I was expecting to bloody hate it. I have to admit, I, I kind of <laughs> casually watched it towards the end. I wasn't really fully invested, but it was a good series. Mm. Mm. What's her name? Who was it? Smithma. Gina Davis was great in it. I love Gina Davis. Yeah. Cut and through, Cutthroat Island, one of the best movies ever made. Really enjoy. I, I'm <laughs> really, yeah, I really enjoyed the first season. I'm, yeah, I, I'm surprised it's gone to season two because... I'd read on a few places that have been cancelled, but there you go. Internet, man. I know. Bunch of bastards. I know. Yeah. Internet nerds. Game of Thrones news. Go on, then. Right. You're, Has he finished the book? No, <laughs> he fucked <laughs> up. He's ridiculous. <laughs> I thought for a minute uh, Jeff was going to be sitting over in Cincy with a muckle hard on because he'd finished the book. <laughs> we should have told him that and just trolled the fuck out of him. Oh. Uh, uh, no, bless when, him. When's April Fool's Day again? April. July. April 1st. That's how that works. Game of Thrones news. Right. No, he's not finished the book. Right. But there crossing, are... crossing over with Westworld. Game of Westworld. Game Fuck of Westworld. Worlds. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> there are five prequel spin offs in the works. Fuck off. Each of the spin offs are supposed to take place in a different time period without, within sort of Westeros. Is this Westeros, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Five. Five. Well, there's no way they're going to let their golden cash cow go. They were going to develop something else. Are people not kind of bored of it as it is? No. Are you sure? Because the last series I watched, I wasn't fully in. Yeah, you were pissy as fuck, though, with that. You you were you were refusing to enjoy it. I wasn't refusing to enjoy it. Yes, you My were. enjoyment level had diminished, I'll give you that. But I wasn't refusing to enjoy it. I just yeah, kind of thought, this isn't really going anywhere that I'm interested in anymore. See you refusing. I wasn't refusing. You were refusing. I just wanted Daenerys to fucking hop on a dragon and come and kill somebody in King's Land. But you know, like I, I mentioned to you, the bit where Ar- Ar- Arya kills what's his name. Mm-hmm. And it was a fucking awesome moment, and everybody liked that moment. Everybody but you killed who? The guy who E&B. killed. No, not that was the season before, man. All right, killed he who? Ki- he killed the uh, Frey, the guy who. who Oh, yeah, because I was like, how the fuck did she get there? Because. 
Because reasons. Yep. Yep. TV. Yep. TV shows. Because she's Batman. All right. Yeah. Okay. Have you got anything else? A trailer came out. Right. I'm super excited for Star Trek Discovery. Yes. I am. I am re- like. I wasn't because I was kind of like. Do we need to go down this road again? Like with 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 Enterprise wasn't great. It was okay, but it wasn't great. So I was a little bit dubious about it. And I think it looks fantastic. I think we've done. Yeah, the, really I know what job. you mean. The the start the the sort of wording at the start. Yeah. Before Kirk, before so we've seen that before. Yeah. But yeah, it does look good. And I think she looks great in it. Um, Sir Nico Martin Green from The Walking Dead. Yeah. She played Sasha. I think she looks fantastic. She looks great. The Klingons look fucking awesome. Are they the Klingons from the JJ verse? Because they look very similar. They to me. do look very similar, unless they're just picking and choosing what they want. Maybe, which would be nice. Well, you would ex- you would hope that it would be in the JJ verse, wouldn't you? You would hope so. Yeah. Like but all, uh, I like, can't imagine it's going to be like connected, connected. But the movies. You know, if you go back in the day, the movies and the TV shows were interconnected. Mm-hmm. Like the Kirk movies were discussed and you yeah. know stuff in that generation, and uh, and I think First Contact was mentioned in Voyager. Well, it's all got to be. And so that, it must all, be connected. All, it surely. all has to be somehow. They can't so, have it be its own thing. But those those Klingons in Into Darkness look badass, and so do these ones. So yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm loving the look of it. I'm loving the um, I'm loving the dynamic of of the fact that she's not the main character. She's like the number one. Uh, I'm loving that. Like she's she's the second in command basically. But I'm also loving female captain again. Yeah, yeah. Because because Janeway got a bad rap, but I like Janeway. I was always a fan. Yeah, of Voyager Janeway. gets a bad rap. I don't understand Voyager that. Voyager gets a really bad rap. Yeah. And of all the series that I've seen, which granted I didn't watch much of TNG. Deep Space Nine, I just couldn't fucking get away with it. Of everything that I've seen, I think she looks pretty. She looks all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm super optimistic about Star Trek. I think it's, it's in the be, autumn, isn't it, or the fall? Yeah, I think it's going to be great. And yeah, <laughs> I'm actually. And let, let's 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 while we're on it, there was another trailer for a basic Star Trek rip off, which you said looked funny as fuck, looked brilliant. I'm sorry, it looks fucking shit. Granted, not a huge Seth MacFarlane fan, but that show looks fucking garbage. I think it was great. Garbage. Absolute fucking garbage. And you know what? I am going to hate watch the fuck out of that show. And yeah, if, I believe if, you. If I start to enjoy it, I'm going to stop watching it. You're such a miserable bastard. It just looks terrible. It, was it like, doesn't look terrible. It's just Seth MacFarlane being a tit, as usual. It looks good. There was a couple of bits I was like, ah, but that was about it. The only bit I'm not sure about is the, and and the Hobie always mentioned this as well, uh, is his second in command being his ex wife. Mm-hmm. That's the only bit I'm uh, I'm a bit like. That was a bit really... poo. That was a bit poo, but I love her. She's great. She yeah, what's she been in? She was in Friday Night Lights. No, nope. and she was in your Agents of Shield. She was um. She was. She went off to do the spin-off. Oh, that fuck! Failed. Is that where she went? Yeah. Oh, bastard! Right. You okay. know. You know her that went off to do the yeah, spin-off with her mean, husband, I... but then the spin-off failed because oh, it was probably oh, shit. So I mean, she's not coming back. Back in Agents of Shield now. Probably not. No. Oh no. No, she's she's away doing Seth MacFarlane shit. That'll be fine. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to it. I think you're wrong. <laughs> I probably could so. be. It might be funny to some people. Not the looks a bit sort of like on the Galaxy Quest. Like that was the feeling I got straight away. <laughs> but you know what? If you're going to do that, give me a Galaxy Quest TV show, because that... Oh, Alan Rickman. Oh. Oh. Let's move on to the next bit. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> so, do you have any more news, or are we moving on to the have you been watching? do not have anything else. Neither do I, apart from South Park, the fractured but whole game. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> is coming in November, and if you pre-order it, you get a free copy of The Stick of Truth. Ooh. So, so get it pre-ordered. I never played that. I never played that. It was mm. good. It was. I quite enjoyed it. Because by the time it actually came out, because it was delayed like fuck. Yeah. By the time it actually came out, I'd upgraded from the 360 to the Xbox One, and the backwards compa- compatibility wasn't available yeah. yet. Yeah. So. Uh, so with that, the news has been Tom. Tom and Cos is over in Cannes, as you call it. You're gonna speak about the entire news again? No, no. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Because really, I just want to say, and there's Boss Bunk and Berwick. 
So you fucked my whole segue there. Sorry. So let's move on. We're going to play a cheeky little uh, promo from one of the podcasts that we love. And we will be coming back for What Have You Been Watching? Mm. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake from the History of Bad Ideas. And we'll get back to your regularly scheduled program here in just a second, geek listeners. But we do a weekly podcast called The History of Bad Ideas. Yeah, well, we'll discuss things like television or movies or music or games or any other thing that falls into our geek related uh, podcast knowledge. You can find us on uh, Geek Life Radio Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Or Radio-Blitz, Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central. Or you can listen to us whenever the hell you want on iTunes and Stitcher. Check us out. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. So, Chris. Yes, Kevin. Because that is your name, which we didn't say at the start of the show. By the way, I am Kev, and he is Chris. And what we also didn't say at the start of the show was your little pièce de résistance. Oh, yeah. Where can people find us, motherfucker? Damn, I can't believe we forgot to do that. I know. I know. It's been boiling me for the last hour, but come on. So I'm not on beer tonight, so you would you would think that I wouldn't fuck it up. Yeah, why are you not on beer? Because. Okay. Because, yeah. don't question me. Tell people where they can okay, find us. Okay, so you are. can find us on the Facebooks and the Twitters. If you search for 365 Flicks Podcast, you can also have a look for us on our shiny, shiny website, which is 365flickspodcast.co.uk. We are also on a couple of cheeky networks that you, you'd know that already. We're on the Tangent Bear Network. We are on Wicked Radio Network. We are on We Be Geeks and our British home, theawesomenerdly.co.uk. Yeah. You can also have a look for us on the Twitters, on an, another awesome network on there. It is hashtag Pardon Family. Yeah. You can listen to us on the iTunes and the Stitchers and the Satchels and any other third party apps question for you go when you started to become a cocky little cock halfway through there and saying you know where we are you know about the networks how much did you nearly fuck up what you were saying not not at all not at all not at all not at all so anyway this is the (laughs) what have you been watching section which probably won't take long because i've been minecrafting it up like a motherfucker for the last Two, three weeks. I do have some stuff I've been reading, though, so we'll be uh, delving into some of that. You've been reading more? I've been reading more. I'm get, I'm turning into a right little really, really bookworm. Wow, Jesus yeah. Christ. So, Chris, so what have you been watching? So, I've only got one movie to talk about, because mm-hmm. I have also been busy. Um, but, so, the movie is a damn good movie. It is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah, is it good? Do you like it? Absolutely loved it. Still looking forward to seeing it. I, I haven't seen it. Just... Life's been getting in the way, and I was Minecraft has been getting in the Minecraft's way. Minecraft's been getting. In. <laughs> I was super excited to see that movie, and then I don't know it came out, and, I, and just I don't know. But it's you, so what I'll have been is it's you. So the, the minute everybody said this is awesome, it's Becky Q, you went no, I'm not watching it. That's what happened, isn't it? That isn't the case. Is at it not? All. Are you sure? On this one occasion, that wasn't the case. Are you sure? Because you know I'm dying to see that. I mean, come on. Well, considering who, you got me into fucking exactly. Guardians of the Galaxy, like, and I've seen the second who, one before who, you. Who didn't watch the first one because they were a pissy bastard? You. Yeah. Who did watch it because they thought this is going to be awesome? Me. Who had to apologise to our good listeners because he, was, he had sand in his journey? You. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell us about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Great. Done. Next. Is that it? <laughs> no, it's it's very, very good. As good, if not better? As good. I'm not going to yeah. say it's better. I would say as good as, as the first movie, uh, which is very rare. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, everybody, everybody, uh, same as the first movie, uh, it's slightly different because they're, you know, they're together. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they, they do kind of sort of, you know, they, without, I don't want to give any spoilers away. Because it's still it's still in the cinemas, uh, but you know they they do get their they do get their opportunities to to go and kind of ex- mm-hmm. you know do their own stories and all that kind of thing. Um, for example, Rocket and Groot or ba- Baby Groot, who is fucking great, <laughs> absolutely great. This is not a spoiler, but the opening sequence. Mm-hmm. is the Guardians are sort of battling this big fucking space monster thing. Is this thing. when Groot's dancing around? Yeah, I, it's I have, fucking seen, great. I have seen Absolutely clips brilliant. Of that. I've seen clips of that. It is so well done, and you need to see that in 3D. Yeah. I always said that the 
one of the few movies that 3D actually lends to the movie was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah you did. And you did. it's very much the same on the second one. Uh, that opening sequence is just fucking superb. <laughs> it's great. Um, everybody's fantastic in it. Uh, I did have a a worry about uh, about Dave Bautista. Okay. Um, I thought that what's the character called again? Drax. Ah, that's the one. Uh, I thought that at the start of the movie he was very much doing like a sort of like the loud laughs. Mm-hmm. And you know, oh, that must be so embarrassing, and all that Which kind was, of thing. He was kind of no, doing that in the first movie. I know he was, but I kind of it was it was like amped up. Yeah, they were overplaying it. And I thought if he's going to be doing this the entire fucking two hours, that, that's going to really get on my nerves. Yeah. But he didn't. It was fine. It was fine. Good. good. Uh, Groot uh, and and Rocket got to go and do their own sort of side story with uh, Yanto. Cool. Cool. Wh- who is a movie steal- stealing son of a What's bitch. What's the Mary Poppins thing? Because I keep seeing the pic. Like, uh, is that a spoiler or like? Because I keep seeing all these pictures with him at Disneyland. No, it's Mary not Poppins. a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. There's a moment later on in the movie. Uh, this is not a spoiler, but uh, Star Lord and uh, and Yanto are kind of floating down, mm-hmm. and Yanto's holding onto his arrow thing. Right. Which that he's holding onto that to so he doesn't fall like a bastard, basically. Right. And so you've got the. You know that you have it when it's flying about. It mm-hmm. does the, the sort of the red light Aye. thing. So what, as he's floating down, there's that coming out of it. Right. And uh, Star Lord looks up up to him and goes, uh, "You look like Mary Poppins." And so he goes, "A Mary Poppins, y'all." And that, that's what it is. It's great. It's so fucking good. See, that sounds crap, but I know it would work because it did work. It's James it Gunn. Work. Yeah, I've I've got. I maybe shouldn't have told you that out of context. I've got I've got all the faith. In, in that movie, I do. I really want to see it. It's just life's just kind of got in the way yeah. right now. It's It's been a bit shit. So I will get around to watching it and I'm hopefully going to make it to the cinema because yeah. I, I don't want to wait till. Well, later. I've got. Th- there are <laughs> like four or five other people who who are, are still want to go and see it at the cinema. So we'll try and. I, I, I'm dying to see it again. So yeah. we'll try and organise something after you get back from your maybe, holiday. Maybe do like a, a Wonder Woman double feature. Could stop being in the cinema. See then, Wonder Woman then, and then Guardians. Because Wonder Woman will be better. It'll be different. It'll be different. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sex us. <laughs> it's because it's got a girl on it. You know, you've got like Guardians doing their thing and then Wonder Woman knitting and doing dishes. So, <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Snowflakes. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, but everybody go out and watch it. It's fucking great. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Done. I am um, well, Kurt Russell. I apologize. sorry. Uh, I, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. Kurt Russell is great as well. Is he? Yes. Is he though? Yes. Is he though? Yes. Is he not past it? No. I love him in the Fast and the Furious movies. It was great in Fast Eight. But like, is he still Kurt Russell? Is he still good? Yeah. I heard there was a de aging thing. Yes, there is. This is very much a Marvel thing now. Yeah. Well, it, but that's the thing. They're getting. They're getting sort of more experienced actors in yeah I suppose to play are. roles so if they want to do a flashback to tell you anything about the character which in this case they do um, then they've got to do that you can't just put a bit of extra makeup on it because it's fucking 4k or whatever but could they not so, just get another actor to play him play no, a younger version no that's stupid <laughs> is it yes is it yes really yes I just I just think like this whole de-aging thing which Marvel probably they did a good job of it with Robert Downey Jr. in Civil War. They're probably doing better at it than most people. Michael Douglas in Ant-Man looked great, I thought. Yeah, but Michael Douglas has always looked old, to be fair. Well, I'll give you that. <laughs> no, I, 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 I thought they did a good job of it. I can't remember Michael Douglas ever looking young. No. 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 <laughs> right. So, they did a good job with uh, Kurt Russell. And yes. Who's the big bad? Spoilers. Who does Michael Rosenbaum play? Who? Lex Luthor from Smallville. He's in it. Who does he play? Is he in it? Oh, he's in it. Aye. Who does Stallone play? Uh, he plays like one of the sort of a nobody. You know, you know, Yanto's crew. Mm-hmm. They are part of a bigger crew, sort of group. Crew. He plays like another captain of oh, another man. ship, sort of thing. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Right, but Michael Rook is a steel scene son bitch. Fuck yes. Any fuck yes. Uh, Howard the Duck cameos? Yes. Oh fuck off. 
Apparently, apparently they are. There is a movie coming of of how the duck. Apparently, Marvel's gonna go there apparently again. Apparently, so. Apparently, so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Again, I've never ever seen the George Lucas one. G- give I don't give want it to. to Max Landis. He's on all sorts of drugs. He could do that. <laughs> Allegedly, good drugs though. It's it's to what, keep like paracetamol. It's that. to keep the ADHD at bay. Right. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So uh, Guardians of the Galaxy two. Apparently, it's a really good watch. You have to go and see it. I'm definitely going to see it when yeah. when I get the chance. Hundred uh, percent. I watched Ghost in the Shell. Ew. So I watched Ghost in the Shell. I see. Yes, I did. Yes, second time round. We'll 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 get better. We're acting. We're acting. So <laughs> God Almighty, uh, pull back the curtain. That fucked. So yeah, I, I watched Ghost in the Shell. You watched um, Ghost in the Shell, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did you get on with it? Well, as I as I said in our previous recording, which didn't happen to record, uh, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of the anime, the uh, the manga movie, um, and if and I've I've always liked it. It's it's a cracking story. I, I like the way they tell it. I love um, Akira as another one of my big favorite movies. Ghost in the Shell's fantastic. The the second one, uh, Ghost in the Shell two point zero, terrible. Wanky name, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? But it, it kind of makes sense because it's it's all computer based and it's all in the system. Eh. You know, she is a ghost in the shell. Right. But yeah, um, love the anime. It's fantastic. And this like. The big problem going into this movie was that everybody was going on about the the whitewashing campaign, the fact that it should be a Japanese girl playing the lead character. Like to me, that was never really a thing. Like it didn't bother me because yeah, okay, she kind of tells you that she she was or she had the mind of a Japanese girl or she had the body of a Japanese girl, and then she gets put in this fucking machine, whatever. Right. That's that's neither here nor there. Put all of that to side because that was just a wanky argument. Anyway, just a hugely wanky argument. It's just not a good film. Just Scar Scarlett Johansson. Um, I'm not a big fan of her. It's not working for me. Lucy was fucking terrible. I wouldn't go as far as terrible. No, it was. No, it was. It, it was. It was. It's just not a good movie. She, I personally don't think she can carry a movie by herself. I think she needs those heavy hitters around her. That's why she's so good in the Avengers. That's why I like her as Black Widow, because she's not exactly out there by herself. You know, I, honestly, I think that I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying that, you know, it, it's the characters that she's on screen with. I yeah. get, I get that. But do you not think that if if they got the right director in there, you know, the, the right writer in there as well, that that it could be a different story. No. to do the character I do no. and I'm never wrong so. I honestly think that that's why maybe you're right because I, I do think that that's why Marvel has shit the bed so far as in not having a, a female centric mm. superhero movie I know that they've got one planned but what it's it's a good two or three years away like, and it, plus it's what's her name isn't it so it's me Brie Larson yeah. who can't me. act for Toffee so yeah I'm not looking forward to that at all. Time, time will tell. Might she, be alright. She, she might turn up right. in the Avengers, and she might be great. But you know what it is? If if you've built these characters, and if you've already built Black Widow, you would think that your first female superhero-led movie would be Black Widow. I would personally like to see them give it a try. I just they don't just know what to do with it. Try it, and then I think they see they see Lucy, and they go. Ah. And then they see this pile of shit, Ghost in the Shell, and they go, oh, but she's so good as Black Widow. Why is it not working? Mm. So they, they're just not going to make it. Well, you know, make a better movie then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, Ghost in the Shell, um, visually stunning, story convoluted as fuck. Like, at one point, I had a bit of a headache. <laughs> you know, I was just kind of sat there like, okay, I'm semi sort of a little bit lost now. Um, so very much like Lucy then. Yeah. But, unlike Lucy, I'd seen the source material, so mm. I knew where it was going. See, I've never ever seen Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. So do you think I might get away with you might the do. Scarlett Johansson movie? Because, you because can, I've not I've not got anything to compare it to and think, oh, fuck that, it's not as good as that. You can kind of go into that movie and just enjoy Scarlett Johansson for the nice legs and nice boobs that she is, you know, and shitty actress that she is. I'm not having that. Whereas I went into it and... I was kind of like, I want me some Ghost in the Shell. 
It's like they, they keep saying, they've been saying for a long time that we're getting a live action Akira. I think now it's looking like it's going to be a Netflix TV show because, you know, Netflix does everything now. I'm not I'm not happy with an, an Akira. I've never seen it either. I'm not happy with it. I was never really a big fan of anime. Why not? Just because. You preferred your Thundercats. Exactly. And your Dungeons and Dragons. Exactly. Yeah. And my He-Man. And your He-Man. No, I'm I, I was I'm a massive again, huge huge fan of Akira. I think Akira's fantastic. But I personally it could work. It could be good. The whole Neo Tokyo thing does look for, like pretty badass on screen and stuff. I know for a long time Zach Efron was attached, and you know I love me some Zach Efron right now. He was attached for a long time to Akira, which I thought would have been good. But I don't know. I've watched Ghost in the Shell, and and they kind of fucked it and shit the bed with it, and I don't want to see Akira or another Scarlett Johansson movie, mm. unless it's in the Avengers. I'm okay with that. So yeah, Ghost in the Shell. Don't bother with it. Um, if there's something else better on the shelf, like The Room, watch The Room. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, his fo- the follow-up, or oh, well, not follow-up, but his new movie is coming out in 2017. It's called Best Friend. Okay. Tommy Wiseau and Greg, what's his name? Is is he still doing it? Is he still acting? Oh, yeah. Dire- oh, my yeah. God. I think it's written and directed by the other one. Greg, right? Me, me, me. What's his name? Cesaro. 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 <laughs> Nicotero. <laughs> I, 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 go with that one. I think it's written and directed by him. Right. Okay. Rather than being directed by Tommy Wise, so it might be an award-winning performance. You never know. <laughs> it might be. He's just a chicken. Just said the, the right <laughs> director. <laughs> well, it might make Tommy but Wise actable. Honestly, I think I genuinely I'm not bullshitting you here. I genuinely think that when that movie comes out. In the uh, UK, we need to find a cinema and go and see it. <laughs> we have to find one that's going to play it. Well, it's we? not going to be at the audience, is it? <laughs> Fuck me. It's not going to be IMAX. With <laughs> <laughs> this fucking gammy eye. <laughs> oh, oh. On another note, though, um, the the movie about the making of with Franco. Oh, yeah? Uh, December. Right. Coming out Christmas. Uh, Franco is playing Tommy Wiseau. We, we like a bit of James Franco. So, oh, yeah. And his brother's playing The Friend. Double bill with Star Wars? If it's mm. at the cinema. Will it, or will it be like a video on demand type well, thing? Well, let's be honest. The last movie that Franco brought out that was entirely by himself was The Interview. And I've never seen it that. got fucking banned just about everywhere. So let's mm. hope the same happens with this one. The, yeah. The Beautiful Disaster, it's called, or something. Right. Or, or The Master of Disaster, or. I'm not happy with them calling it a disaster. The Disaster Artist. That right. was it. Right. Yeah. Um, it's coming in December. I'm probably not going to watch it. I like the room for the fucking the absolute genius that it is. We still need to get Paul to watch that. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. He's not said no. Paul, 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 or Burn Paul. Fuck no! no <laughs> watch that, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so, no, no. So, Ghost in the Shell. That was a bit of a tangent. Ghost in the Shell. I personally would not recommend it. Uh, make of that what you will. You may enjoy it. I will give it a watch, but I'll wait till it comes to Sky Movies. She does look pretty fine, so I'll give her that. She looks pretty what? Fine. Oh. She'd be looking fine. You know, that's what the kids say now. Fuck them. <laughs> the non-binaries. Okay, so <laughs> what else do you got? Holy so, me. I've not got any more movies, but I've got a couple of cheeky TV shows to speak about. Well, I've got a movie, so I'll quickly, Go. I'll quickly interject, because um, this one isn't going to take long. I watched um, Fist Fight. With Ice Cube and Charlie Day, you know I like me some uh, some Ice Cubes. Oh fuck yeah! So yeah. truly for that something or other. It's it's not terrible, but it's not great. It's really not great. The ke- the whole bread and butter of the movie is Ice Cube being ghetto and gangster and Charlie Day having his voice. Char- oh, Charlie Day definitely has a voice like, and it is fucking irritating. And he does it all the way through the movie. I mean, I know that's how that works, having a voice and stuff, but it is so irritating. So, so massively irritating. Mm. Movie itself is actually decent. It's watchable. There's some funny moments in it. Mostly Ice Cube being a gangster and stuff. Um, there's not really anybody else good in it. Um, Christina Hendricks was in it, which I didn't realise it was her to start off with, but then when she came up at the end, I was like, oh, it's Christina Hendricks. 
not great though. You try to tempt me with fucking little, Joan. A little bit, a nah, little bit. Nah. But um, again, wouldn't really recommend this movie. However, I've had the Big Sean song stuck in my head for since I watched it. Um, he's got a daughter in the movie and she's got like a talent contest and he has to be there, but he also has to be at the... Um, he's going to be getting sacked, which the principal is Hank from the Breaking Bad film, uh, series. Mm. Again, trying to tempt you. But, um, it's not going to happen. So he has to be at the sacking, but he also has to be... Oh, and President Palmer's the guy that's going to sack him. There's his person in it. You're nearly fucking oh, there. I'm getting there. You're right. nearly I'm there. Getting there. But yeah, so um, he has to be... <laughs> Give me a Buffy and I'm in. <laughs> he has to be at the talent contest, but he also has to be at the office to get sacked. So he goes there, he gives them what for, and then he goes to the talent contest, he leaves his daughter by herself, and she's like... Eh. And then he goes out and he's like, right, play that song that you want to play, we'll do that song, the dance moves are the same, I'll do it. And she tells you earlier on, you get a little scene where she tells you how she's getting picked on by the school bully, uh, Trisha, who's a little fucking asshole. And um, he goes out to the song, and he doesn't know what's coming up, but it's the big Sean song, Ain't Fucking With You. And he's like, I ain't fucking with you. You little dirty ass tricky little dirty ass bitch not fucking with you. And she's like singing it to the to the um to the bully. And he's just kinda like, Okay, well I'm going with this, I'm going with this. And it, that song's been stuck in my head for days. Right. I have Apple Music and I did download it because I had it stuck in my head. Yeah. <laughs> good song though. Really good song. Bad film. Bad. Yeah. So no Buffy. No Buffy. Yeah, fuck that then. But, President Palmer, Hank the Tank, and Christina Hendricks. But then Charlie Day. Charlie Day, yeah. Uh -huh. See, I don't mind... Like, is, is his voice the sort of thing that could make you stop watching anything? Yeah. Because I think it is. Like, put him in Justice League, I probably wouldn't watch it. Christ. Like, I probably wouldn't. a bold wouldn't. statement. <laughs> if, he, if he played the Joker. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, I'm the Joker. Hey, hey, hey. Imagine him saying hunka hunka. Hunka hunka! It's actually quite good, I'd watch it's that. <laughs> Better than fucking <laughs> hunka hunka hunka. Better than the jar though. The fruit of my loins! Was he Daniel Day Lewis now? <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Jared Leto is almost Daniel Day Lewis though. He's fucking you not. He gets into his characters as much as yeah. Daniel Day Lewis. Just because you do that, just because you go method, doesn't mean you say you're as talented as Daniel Day Lewis. Fucking. I don't know, it kind of does a little bit. No, it, kinda it doesn't. <laughs> I'm coming on greener. So, right, move on to your next thing. What What else have you been watching? I've been watching a show, it has just started on Amazon Prime. The show is American Gods. Yeah, I watched the first episode of that. Damn. It's pretty fucking good, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh huh. There's there's three episodes on there now. It's one a week's been yeah. uploaded. Yeah, it's all that works. Fuck, I've I, I've never seen a show like this before. It's mad, isn't it? It's mental. You Bad McShane shit. is amazing. Do you recognise the um? Oh, how do I say this without sounding racist? Shadow, the coloured chap. Yes. Yes. Do, so do, do you, you recognise him? No, I, I, he seems familiar, but I used to be in Hollyoaks. Oh, then fucking no. <laughs> he used to be in Hollyoaks, dude. Right. He's a fucking badass actor. He's done right for himself. Like. I was kind of watching it. I was like, holy shit, Ricky Will. Where, where the fuck did he come from? He's a good ass actor. I'm really impressed with him, to be honest. I mean, the show, it lends itself to some massively outrageous acting. Yeah. But he's good. Really, he is good. I'm he really, is good. I'm really like. Uh, you've got. There's a guy from Orange is the New Black in there. One of the. Um, one of the guards. Was it Porntash? All right, he's in there. Cool. Um, you know the the fucking guy who's he plays like a, a French bad guy in everything. He comes in in uh, episode two. I'm not going to remember his Pe name. Pepe Le Pew. Just go with that one. I, I think remember. I know who you're on about. Joaquin D'Almeida. I think I think that's who you're on. Maybe. About. Yeah. Maybe. Aye. Uh, yeah. It's it's trippy as fuck. It's so fucking weird. And yeah, I, I've. I've never seen so graphic sex scenes on a TV show before. Gay sex scenes as well. Yeah. Gay Um <laughs> There was, like... Uh, I think it was the first episode, actually, where the, the woman who who is uh, riding a guy mm -hmm. and then he starts getting smaller. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of gets just absorbed by her. Mm -hmm. And then there's, like, a space shot... Where he's just floating there with a muckle fucking hard on. 
Why not? <laughs> Why not indeed? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. No, I'm, I am. Um, I watched the first episode. Keep on watching it. I'm gonna keep on with that one. The start of on, on I, th- I'm, I gather that on at the start of each episode, episode there's going to be like a so a, a mini story of yeah. a different god. Cool. The start of episode two is um, it's set on like the very first slave ship. Nice. Uh, like a Dutch slave ship, and um, so the, well, the the only thing is the god takes the animal form of a spider. She might not get away with. It's mm. a sorry. It's like a, it's got like purple fucking legs. And is stuff it a muckle stuff. spider though? Yeah, I, I see that doesn't It'd bother. Be fine. Me. You know, like um, eight legged freaks doesn't bother me because oh, it's not like that big. It's like oh. a like a big fuck off tarantula or something. Yeah, that'll bother me. Yeah, yeah. You could tell it. It's it's coloured because it's the hairs on my legs are standing up now. Oh dear, you don't want that. Mm. Um, but the guy, the guy that there's like a one of the slaves is chained up and all that. And he's sort of saying a prayer, and so the god comes along, um, and the guy does a, a fucking amazing monologue about slavery and all mm. that kind of thing, um, and he, he says, uh, like he he kind of like click his fingers or something, and all of their chains fall off, and he goes to them, set fire to the ship. Cool. And so, one of the one of the guys in the background goes, but we'll die. We'll, we'll fucking die if we do that. And he goes, well, the, the guy, I'm quoting here, but the guy goes, nigger, you died as soon as you came on this ship. <laughs> and the, the monologue that this guy does about, like, the, you, you know, that you're just the start of 400 years of fucked up shit happening right. to your people. It is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to stick yeah. him on that show. And like I said, the first episode's badass. Yeah, I like a bit of Ian McShane as well. It's nice to see him back yeah. on TV. Oh yeah. oh yeah, it's always nice to see Ian McShane. Not in that one episode of Game of Thrones that he was a wank tard. Yeah, it was stupid, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you go. Yeah, um, I got two TV shows, but I'm I'm going to talk about one because um, yeah, Little Boy Blue. Oh yeah, I tried watching it. Yeah, I know. I know you didn't stick with it because of all the scoutsness and that. No, it wasn't only that. It wasn't only that. I, that's part of it. Because hearing that accent makes me want to peel skin off. See, I love that accent. I love the skull. Oh, nah, 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 nah. It goes right through me. Aye. Like the shits. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> but, no, I, I just... You know, when, you, when you're watching the football and you hear fucking Jamie Carragher speaking, Aye. as soon as you start speaking, I go... No, but <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give you that one because Jamie Carragher has an annoying voice anyway. And then you put the scouse in there and it is a little bit more annoying. But yeah, little, little boy blue. Yeah. Um, for those out there, mostly talking to the Americans when I say this, but um, little boy blue is the true story. It's a drama of um, a young lad. I think it was nine or ten. Nine. I want to say he was nine. Uh, when he was walking home from football training one day, he was um, caught up in a bit of a gangland shooting, and basically he, he caught a bullet and he died. And um, he was a big Everton fan. Like when it happened over here, it was a big thing because because he was so young and because he had nothing to do with anything. He's so innocent and all that. It was a huge thing over here. Was it? Um, I can't remember it, was, it. I remember it very well. Which is what I'm going to come to in a second. Because as you know, something like this, people get up in arms about stupid little niggly shit. But um, yeah, so this series came on. Uh, Stephen Graham's in it, who again... Fantastic actor, we love him from This Is England. He was in um, what was that Boardwalk Empire? Mm-hmm. He's in that. He's fantastic in that. I think he's in the New Pirates as well. Uh, he, he's been in a couple of the Pirates yeah. though. So he I, was in, I he let was him in off. Guys in New York. That Guys that in New York elevates him again. He's, he's literally like if you can think of a British actor who's been in something. It's, we did. It's him. We did a while back on one of our top top fives. We did a, a top five ca- uh, actors who are just in everything. Yeah. And I think he was number one of pretty one of our high, lists. Pretty but, much yeah. high. A fantastic actor. I didn't really get a massive chance to shine in this show. It was only four to, four or five episodes long. And it's literally, um, it starts with the shooting and then shows you the behind the scenes of the investigation and um, what the family were going through. It is fucking horrific to watch. Certain scenes in it really get to you. Like, um, I know the, the scene in the hospital... When when the kid dies, you know it's not a spoiler. It happens in the first well, ten minutes. Yeah. It's it's self-explanatory what happens. Um, but when, when the kid is actually declared um, dead, there's the scene that is shot from sort of back and to, back and to the left. It's sort of like a little bit behind her, 
but you can see the side of the mother's face and the sound just cuts off and she sort of convulses when she realises, like, she doesn't spew, but she convulses, like, she's just realised that he's, he's passed, although she doesn't really realise, she just, like, it's hitting her. Oh, man, I nearly bust into tears right there, because she, she is fucking good. She was good, she was good. I mean, the only reason I downloaded it was because Stephen Graham was yeah. in it. I didn't really have any interest to, to in watching fair, it. it's kind of the only reason I watched it. But it got to, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes in, the the bit that I put off uh, was uh, they went to see the body in the morgue. Yeah. And the coroner had put like an Everton bed sheet over um, him and the Everton not, pillows. and You're not a big Everton fan. No, it's nothing to do with Everton. <laughs> I couldn't give a fuck about Everton. I know, I know. It's just like, they, he said, oh, I put that over him. I hope you don't mind. And I was like, oh, you know what? I don't need this show in my life. You yeah. can fucking keep this depressing bullshit. To be fair, once you get past episode one, there's not much more of that. Um, you see the family grieving, but there's not much more of the the depressionness. Yeah, you know, nah. they kind of get past that. Once you have the funeral, that's that's it done. Um, but one of the things that really got me fucking re- really pissed off um, is, and it's been a little bit of a controversial thing, and I really don't get it because this this TV show. It's based on a true story, mm-hmm. which, as we know, as Brits, we're really good at doing fucking true story shows, you know, and and we always put in everything that happened, and we we fucking went down the line with it, you know. There's there's a scene in I think it's episode four, could, is it the last one when the when the guys that did it they've all kind of been caught and they're all in in court, and they're getting sentenced because you know they they're all a bunch of assholes. So they're getting sentenced, and while they're getting sentenced, they're laughing. You know? People are in an uproar right now, and they've been complaining about the show, and they've been complaining about the fact that the kids in the show are laughing when they're being sentenced. Now, I know you literally just said that you didn't realise, like, you you couldn't remember it being that big of a story and all that, but that was one of the things that always stood out for me, like, in the paper and on the news... They kept telling you that these kids were laughing in court. Mm-hmm. Like, they just didn't give a fuck. It was a huge thing. So you put that in a drama, in a true drama, that actually fucking happened, and people are in an uproar. It's like, how 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 can you do that in a TV show? How can you... Like, what, are we are we now supposed to feel sorry for them? Like, like we're portraying these guys to be evil motherfuckers, which they are, by the way. But it's like, this is a huge point of contention right now. But it happened. People are just thick fucks on the internet, I think. Well, exactly. exactly. But that is what happened, and they put it in the show. And yeah, it's a bit shit when you're watching it. You, you've got the, the woman playing the mother and the father and all that. They're sort of in that little... They're on the, the table and everything, and, and then you see the guys laughing their heads off. And, and it's just like, that shit fucking happened. It's got to be in there. Yeah. It has to be in there. But then the same people would be kicking off if they hadn't put that in there aye because why didn't you show them to be evil monsters yeah yeah uh, it's it's the only reason I bring the show up I, people I, are just insulted by everything and just sh- just some people should just not be allowed on the internet yep yeah I'll give you that yeah definitely me first and foremost <laughs> but yeah uh, Little Boy Blue really really good TV show I really enjoyed it Stephen Graham's fantastic he doesn't exactly get to shine like he normally does in the show, but mm. I think that's because whereas normally Stephen Graham is performance over content, like the content's always good, but he's all about his performance, which you know, rightly so, because he gives an amazing performance in everything. I think he, I like to think he sort of dialed it back because he wanted it to be about what happened, so he didn't want to be monologuing like Stephen Graham does, yep. he didn't want to be stealing the show, he wanted it to be about the tragedy it was. In my mind, could be wrong. Maybe he was just having an off day. <laughs> Maybe. These things know. happen. These things do yeah. happen. And another thing, before we move on... Maybe he's a Liverpool fan. He is a Liverpool fan. Well, that's but why then. Another thing, before Fuck. I move on... Um, Sheridan Smith, so glad she wasn't fucking in it. Was she supposed to be in it? Because like? she's in fucking everything. Was she supposed to be in it? No, but oh. if it's like a scouse role, or a, a common lass role, or you know a downtrodden estate girl... Usually Sheridan Smith does it. Really glad she didn't. She was good in the one about Sharon Matthews, though. 
No, she wasn't. That was fucking terrible. The show itself, I thought, was crappy. Oh, I, I didn't. But like, I didn't. Like I her thought she it. was good. I honestly didn't like her in it either. Me, but you know, you it's go. fair dues. Different strokes. So different yeah, shows for different needs. Different shows for different holes. <laughs> exactly. Yep. All right. So what you got? I've only got one more TV show to speak about. Kill. Cool. And it's another one on Amazon Prime. Ooh. You like uh, the Amazon Prime? Yeah. You're getting well, your money's worth, aren't you? Yeah, well, you've got to, haven't you? This is a show, I think it's just started uh, as well. It's a show called The Path. Ooh. Yeah. It's got Aaron Paul in it. The Garden Path. No. It's got Aaron Paul in it. Who is? Breaking Bad. Right. Uh, well, he's not Breaking Bad. He's I'm dressy, bitch. Exactly. Uh, it's also got Hugh Dancy in it, who was in Hannibal. Right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like him. And it's about like a sort of, well, they don't call it a cult. They call it like a, a movement. Nice. So I'm only two episodes in. That's how Judaism started. Well. That's how Christianity started. That's how Judaism started. That's how it? Scientology started. Yeah, moving it was, on. It was all... So speaking of Scientology, before <laughs> you go and get us shut down, uh, it's kind of not based on Scientology, but it's along those lines. Right. They've got like, so so uh, Hugh Dancy's character kind of plays like the the leader of the or he's not the, the leader because the leader is sort of well they keep saying he's he's uh, in Peru sort of translating fucking tablets or Alien something speech. yeah um but so he's not the leader but he's like the person in charge but well, this guy's away and uh so he's he's the leader Aaron Paul is uh plays a guy who uh, he was a believer, but he went on like this spiritual trip, and he's come back with doubts. And so he's kind of, you know, he's kind of investigating somebody who tried to leave, mm. and then, well, it's he committed suicide, mm. suicide in inverted commas. Plot so I'm going to throw this fucking thing at you in a minute. Plot thickens. Yeah, it does. It's I'm really enjoying it. I don't know. It's a bit on the nose, isn't it? How do you mean it's on the nose? With all the Scientology shit that is going on, all these people who are leaving the Scientologies and... Well, yeah, that's... that's It's a bit on the nose. It's on the fucking nose. Do you think, though... It's telling a story about a fucking cult and people who are trying to leave the cult. Do you think, though, when the leader comes back from Peru, it'll be Tim Robbins? Well, no, it's not, because you've seen him. All right, who is it? I don't know. Okay. Could be Tim Robbins. You said you've seen him? Well, yeah, but he's like, he's, well... Oh, did you see him? But his face was all blurred. Spoilers. <laughs> it's not Tim Robbins. It's, it's not Fish fucking Tim Robbins. Is it Lawrence Fishburne? No, it's not. Because he's white. <laughs> Apples don't cost a nickel. <laughs> Damn, I should have said it's Sam Jack. <laughs> uh, I'm really enjoying it. Fuck you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got one more, more, more TV show, but I'm literally, um, I'm gonna say that uh, dear white people on Netflix, if you are flicking through and you come across it, keep flicking. Yeah, I've got, th- I've got no inclination to watch that whatsoever. Uh, maybe, may- maybe, and you know, it's not, it's not outside the realm of possibility. But maybe I just don't get it. You know, what like, is the premise of? It's the- literally um, th- there's a, it's called Dear White People, so it's about black people, and right. then one 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 lassie, the main lassie in the show. Uh, works for a radio station and her show is called Dear White People and she's a- at university so it's like all of the fucked up shit that she sees white people doing on a daily day day basis is what she talks about on our radio show so it's like this is not acceptable you can't be doing this uh, you you can't be misappropriating our culture and you know it's hot topics of today you know and it, it is it's hot topics so I suppose like I say, I think I watched like three episodes. They're only half an hour long. Possibly I'm completely missing the point and it's not what I think it's about. But I just don't like it. It's I'm not gonna watch that. And it's and before Dev gets on the Twitter and sends out tweets saying, Kev, you can't be saying stuff like that in this day and age. I'm not saying that at all. It could be about anything. I just think it's piss poor written. It's trying to be Aaron Sorkin. It's not Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> it's not clever at all. And it's really trying so desperately fucking hard to be clever. Because normally I can get on with that like that kind of topic. Those 
films, those programs. I've watched plenty of stuff like that. This one just screams Netflix trying to be clever. Mm. Is is all it does? Yeah, I've got. I've, nah, I would I'm not interested in watching it. To be I honest. would quite literally just suggest you don't bother. Um, I don't know. It just it says that it's satire. It says that it's comedy, and it says that it's political. It's definitely political. It's none of the other two. It's not satire. It's not comedy. It's it's just shit. Mm. But some people out there might like it yeah. so you know if you wanna if you wanna it's it's only half an hour so it's not exactly gonna take much out of your day but um, 13 Reasons Why is really good show I suggest you watch that instead okay yeah and it's about suicide so you know shiny definitely watch that yep. yeah Paul, <laughs> Paul's been watching that Paul He's... normal Paul or Paul Paul <laughs> which one's which Paul Paul's burn alright Paul Paul <laughs> so no one Paul yeah. Paul Trotter yeah okay he's Fuck been watching Jesus that. Christ so he's been watching that he's been enjoying it yeah. excellent yeah does, does uh, are you going to tell him what I think is the big thing at the end you tell him at the end oh, no he's only three episodes in tell so. him when he's finished I'll tell him and I want to hear what he says because I, I still think that's the best theory I've seen yet well you know what he did tell me we were down in Newcastle two weekends ago and he did tell me that he listens to us when he's in bed Oh, so not quite sure what to do with that. Even I don't do that shit. He that's didn't tell me what he was wearing while he was listening. That's gross. Hopefully headphones. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right. So let's move on. Okay, I've got. Uh, have you got? So you said you've been reading some shit. Yeah, I've got some reading shit. Yeah, I've got a, a graphic novel that I've been reading as well. Do you want to go first? Kill. Uh, Video Sync Crack. The, I spoke about it on the last episode. The the book about the guy that um, has the video store. Oh yeah. I'm yep. um, three quarters of the way through. I'm getting there. I really love how on the Kindle app it tells you at the bottom the percentage you're, you're through the book. So it literally says like 76% and I'm all buzzing. I'm like, so like, oh yeah me. I'm fucking getting there. Like <laughs> I can't believe I've read this much of a book. You know? Because my other ones aren't actually books, they're comics. But yeah, um, it's a fucking brilliant read. I really, really cannot, I cannot suggest this book highly enough. If if you're a fan of the video shop cu- counterculture that was of the day, it's just fucking great. This guy gets it. He, he was there through the through the thick and thin of it, there from the the very beginning till the very end, and you can feel it. You can feel his pain from work. I loved working in a video shop, but when you were doing twelve hour days, it was fucking painful, and you feel it with this guy. Like he's talking about when the the rent the new rentals come in, and he's getting them all ready, and he's putting them in the sleeves, and then he's putting them out on the, on the shelf and all that, putting them out on a Friday, even though you couldn't rent them for a Monday, so they sat on the shelf for like three days that you can't rent them and all that. It's fucking annoying. All things that I'm sitting there going, yep, 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 did that, mm-hmm, yep, did that. And uh, he mentions global video a couple of times, so that was nice to see a little global video mention there, because that's where I worked. Hmm. But he's primarily blockbusters, and they sounded like a more of a bunch of tyrants than global. Wow. Yeah, they sound like a right bunch of knob ends. So I'm happy to hear that as well. <laughs> but yeah, Video Syncratic. Um, if you haven't read... Well, you probably haven't. It's on the Kindle. It's on Amazon. You can get a hard copy cover uh, book of it, which I'm going to be doing because it is the video that Sounds you like get. I'm trying it. And uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it because, as we say at the start of the show, I'm, I'm the pissy ex-video store clerk. I only worked in a video store for four years, but much like the cinema, I'm holding on to the cinema experience the the video shop culture was fucking amazing like you can't get that anywhere else i know people say oh but you can go to a record store and you can browse the vinyl and all it's not the same it's not the same it's it's the same but different it's not it's nothing like it Mm. but uh, yeah i'm loving reading it and this guy really well written He, he just he writes really fucking good stuff like his little anecdotes and stuff i'm like yeah i'm like this is good. Yeah, so videos and crack. Tangent. Uh, you mentioned cinema experience there. Yeah. That's getting less and less for me right now. So I've been reading a graphic novel. Uh, the graphic novel was actually sent to us. He, The, the guy, uh, Charlie ah, yes. Charlie Chester, he's called. Uh, he was recommended by Andrea. Shepard. Yes. Yeah. So it took me ages to bloody get round to reading it. Uh, I sent Charlie an apologetic email this morning. Um, but I read volume one. 
yeah. last night, and it is fucking great. I read like the first four pages when you sent it to me. It's it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, the the I mean, there's two volumes on the. He sent us two volumes yeah. to read. Aye. Uh, I can't wait to read volume two. It's so good. The it's called Boy Zero. Yeah. And uh, it's about a detective called Detective Nigel Drecker. Right. And uh, so it's kind of it's kind of going back and forward. We 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 mentioned uh, or I mentioned uh, we've got some indie talks lined yeah. up for the next. You know, is he coming whenever on? Whenever he is coming on. <laughs> um, Are we getting free T-shirts like we did off? I don't know. We better maybe. Because I feel like that's a given now. I'll ask him. So anybody who's listening, if you're coming on for an indie talk, free t-shirts yeah. and cause free hat. Uh, but yeah, it's about, uh, well, it's about a, a child murder, basically. Okay. You've not gone that far yet, have you? Four pages. So the, well, the, the volume one opens up. Uh, uh, Detective Drecker is in like a therapy session. Yeah. And so the, the therapist is, is kind of saying to him, well, you know, you haven't closed this case. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's sort of saying, why haven't you closed this case? And so his, his he kind of says, well, because there was something, something wasn't right about it. And uh, so she sort of says to him, right, well, tell me about the case. Tell me just whatever order you want to tell me about it, you mm-hmm. know, what happened when and all that kind of thing. Tell me about what happened. Um, and so it takes you back. It kind of goes back and forward. So there's two different time time periods in the right. story. I'm not going to tell you any more than that because I want you to enjoy but it. But won't you tell but, me more? Tell me everything. No, I'm not going to tell you any more. <laughs> so uh, I, I, th- I, yeah, I definitely want you to to keep on reading volume one. I'm going to. It's really, really good. I was, I was quite into it when, as soon as you said like the the therapy and all that. I, I, I was enjoying it. I quite like the art. I'm actually, yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. The, the artwork is great. You know what? I, I really noticed when I was reading it, and this is maybe sad, but the panelling yeah. kind of changes from the different time periods. There's nothing sad about that. And it's, it's really, really good nothing looking. Nothing sad about that. No, like, because um, when you sent it to us, that was sort of the first thing. I was like, I'll, I'll open it up. I was like, I'm, I'm going to have a look at the art first because that's kind of, I'm reading a lot of image right now. And um, I'm reading Don- Donny Cates' God Country, which is just fucking phenomenal. And I kind of just need the art to be like that. <laughs> it's not quite It's not quite the same thing. It's completely different. But yeah, it's, it grabbed me straight away. So I'm, I am going to read the whole thing. Good. I'll read both Good. of them. And uh, yeah, Charlie will be coming on the show. Uh, at at some point, we're going we're, we're, uh, to try and get yeah. a time, hopefully, scheduled for next week. Plans for Indie Talk are really uh, all over the place. Which is not a bad thing. Be fine. It's not a bad thing at all. But that's all I've got. Cool. Uh, the last thing I've got is I. We have talked about The Walking Dead, the series. Uh, you're no longer watching it. No. Because it is going rapidly downhill. I think I'm literally going to give it two episodes in the next series. Like, if, if it doesn't mm. do. If it does. Because I know what they'll do. They'll bring Nicotero in for the first episode. It'll be amazing. And then the second episode will. Oh, yeah. The first else. episode will kick ass. Aye, aye. So, and then again, everybody will go. The Walking Dead is back. Yep, yep. So I'm I'm going to give it that first two episodes. Make sure I get past the Nicotero one. See how I get on with it. But but as I say, I've been I've been reading some image and all that. And the I read the latest issue of the Walking Dead comic book, um, which I did a review on the website for because literally it was fucking amazing. Kirk, you know what it is. I'm only bringing it up because I want to know what's going on with Kirkman. I want to know what's happening because he's writing for the show now. Well, he has been for years. How can he nail the comic book so fucking brilliantly? And he writes amazing dialogue in the comic book. Basically, the latest issue was um, Andrea still in it. Um, oh, you no, know, she died in like season two or three. Bas- yeah, basically, three. she she's been in it still, and this was like this issue was her dying. Uh, she got bit. In the last episode, she got bit in the neck, and then um, she came back and basically she's with Rick as well. They're like together. Okay. Yeah. So there's no Michonne in the comics. M- Michonne's in it, but she's not with Rick. Right. Although there is a, a little panel halfway through the issue where I was kind of like, you know what, when she dies, <laughs> Michonne's on. <laughs> but yeah, um, the whole issue was basically Andrea dying and and people saying goodbye to her, and it was fucking beautiful. Like it was absolutely beautiful. 
the last six or seven issues that I've been reading is like after the Whisperer War. So basically, Negan sort of like in a in a weird place right now with the group. The, the Alexandria got totally invaded by a mass horde. So the last six or seven episodes is literally there's been fuck all to it. It's just been battling hordes and getting rid of like the the walkers and all that. So they finally pumped the brakes and Kirkman decided to kill Andrea. And it was, oh man, it was fucking incredible. Just the way he wrote it, the way, as you say, with Boy Zero, the way um, certain things were panelled, just gorgeous, just fucking amazing issue. And then at the end, he always does a letters page, like two pages of letters from the fans that he answers from like the last issue, stuff that's coming up. None of that. It was a letter to the fans about how hard it's been to write killing off Andrea because he's like she's been my favourite character since the get go like love Andrea and he's like for the last two months I've been living with this and he's like and trust me I've been grieving and I'm sitting there and I'm reading it and I'm like god I wish he had fucking passion like that for the TV Mm. show but then the TV show from what you've been saying there is fucking so unbelievably different oh yeah I it's it's What's that saying? It's it's apples and oranges. Yeah. It's completely different now. You know, Rick's still the main guy. Carl's still in there. But a lot of things are completely different. Like, um, Michonne was with King Ezekiel. That's who she was with. They basically, in the TV Why would show, you go that far off script, then? Because he, he started doing his Kirkman remixes, which is something that me and Hayes have always said. When he does it, he does it well. It's just that it doesn't seem to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like um, Just like the show. Well, yeah, basically, I. But um, I just read it, and I've been reading like a, a lot of the issues lately. But this one just really screamed, "What the fuck has happened to the show?" Like it really just shouted that to me. And and then when you got the little let- letter at the end, when he's like, um, he was sat on a plane. Uh, or was it a train? He was he was sat on a plane or a train. I printed the letter in the review because it's a great letter. But basically, um, he sat on a train or a plane and he'd written the scene in which she was dying and he just started greeting, he just started crying. And he's like, people around me must have thought I was a fucking idiot. And he's like, but I just killed Andrea, so I didn't care. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to bring it up because the dude fucking... He, I don't know if he's just lost the love for the show because AMC's all about getting the money out of it or... I don't know. But you would think that they would... Well, it's hard to tell, isn't it? But, was, <laughs> you know, you would think that they would give him a certain amount of freedom, but you just don't know, do you? It just pissed me off, because I was like, how can you do that? And then the TV show is the way it is right now. Mm. But hopefully it'll come back, and, and maybe maybe killing someone like her in the comic will rejolt his passion, and he'll do something good. I doubt it, though. I, d- I highly doubt it. So, yeah, Walking Dead... Image Comics, read it. It's fucking great. And especially, I think it was issue 169. It's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. There's there's like a whole page. And it's just panels, just little squares. Like celebrity squares. Going along like that, right the way down. And it's each main character in each panel saying goodbye in their own little way. Mm. And then halfway through, you get a little panel with Negan. Who's like, I would have fucked you at one point. And it just (laughs) totally, like, you're sitting there like... Oh, 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 he, oh. <laughs> it's just great. It's fucking great. But typical Kirk Kirkman knocks out of the park in the books, and, and it, I just want to know what's going on with the show. Because I probably ain't going to watch it. I've got no intention to go back to it at all. I think you should. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> but yeah, so that is what we've been watching. So I think that's it. Everything? Yep, yeah, that's it. Are we going to move on to our top five? Then? Let's do it. Astro Radio Z is a horror, cult, exploitation film podcast hosted by me, Derek Carey. I was one of those monster kids growing up. The one that used to sit in the back end of that video store and scour over every single last film cover you saw back there. From the slashers to the monsters to the sleazy stuff. Yeah, I was freaking obsessed. And I still am. So much so, I became a filmmaker myself. Now I bring on all my filmmaker friends 
critics, musicians, and any other fans of the dark arts, which are horror, exploitation, and cult film. Are you one of these people? Then tune in and listen to my show, Astro Radio Z. So what is the top five? So the top five is... Top five great movies that people probably missed. Now you had a... Oh, in the last decade. In the last... I added that stipulation in the last decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I I already had like two or three that, yeah, came outside of the last decade. Well, (laughs) I was kind of... I started, you know, Googling it just to get some ideas and I was like, oh... Fuck us! I'm going to end up with a list of like twenty odd, and you said, "Oh, can we make it like a sort of fairly easy one?" See, I honestly and, thought it was like just in case we get stuck and we could do it again, but a different decade or that. <laughs> that would work too. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking he's going to want to do this again. <laughs> Spin off. Uh, no, I just kind of uh, meh. But yeah, so last decade. <laughs> last. Decade. Last decade. Right. So how did you get on with it? <sighs> I've got a list. Okay. It's not a great list. It's not a bad list, but it's not a great a list. list. But it is a list. It is the list of Jericho. But yeah, um, yeah. so I'll let you start because it's your list. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so I got there in the end. When I was coming up with the movies, I basically said that if I was picking one, it had to be a movie where if, if I said the name of the movie... Most people would go, no, I've never seen that. Which yeah. Is the, that's the idea of the top five. It's a, it's, a, it's a hidden gem list. Yeah, exactly. So it's movies that we think are good that probably most people haven't seen. So not necessarily that we think are good, but people didn't. No, because they didn't that see be, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, might have to, I might have to rearrange. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that other people think are shit. Yeah, because they ha- probably haven't seen. I had BVS in there. Well, no, I no, I wouldn't put it in <laughs> fucking hell. Right, so my number five. Uh, well, I've hobbied my number five. As you do. As you do, but there's a reason. Uh, because they're both UK movies. They're both movies starring Jack O'Connell. Ooh, oh, Startup. Startup, yeah. uh, 2013. And 71, 2014. Have you seen 71? Um, is that the one where he's in the army? He's a British soldier. Yeah. Uh, in I've, Belfast I never, I never watched in 1971. I never uh, and he gets separated from his unit during a big like riot, and he has to, you know, he's injured and all that kind of thing, uh, and he has to try and get back he's a to his base. Actor. It is a hell of a movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. Movie. I always wanted to watch that. I don't know why I never. Um, Start up. Uh, see, that's another. That, that's one that if if I said to somebody, "Have you ever seen this movie? Mm-hmm. It's fucking great." No, no, I've never heard of that. Uh, Start up is about a 19 year old lad who has. Wait, you know how to sell that movie, don't you? Just Go on then. Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. <laughs> but then, see, would would a normal person say, oh yeah, fucking right? Would a normal person say, oh yeah, Ben Mendelsohn? Probably not. No. <laughs> no. Um, so it's about a 19 year old lad who is moved from juvenile, mm. uh, juvenile prison, do you call it? To adult prison, basically. I wasn't there, I only joke um, about that. I only joke about. I was only asking you. the name, not if you were there. <laughs> uh, where uh, and the, the his dad happens to be in the same yeah. prison that prison as him, uh, and it's it's a, again it's a fucking good movie. Startups a cock, yeah. movie. I love that movie. I like the. Um, it's not really a spoiler, but I like the scene at the end when they actually get to have a, a fucking crack. You know when when I think the, is it the dad that's going getting moved or is he getting? I think moved? he's getting out, isn't he? Aye, and they get a chance to aye, great mm-hmm. Mendelssohn man Mendelssohn. Fucking brilliant. So yeah. It's your number five. My number five um, is a movie that I actually own on Blu-ray. It's one of the comic book movies out there that I think is fantastic. I, I think it's one of the few comic book movies that does everything right when you look at the source material and then the movie. Uh, a lot of people don't actually really have heard of it and it's Losers. Yeah, this is good. I, I absolutely... But I had never heard of that until you told me about it. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, how, it's how the section works. Yeah. 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 But I, I love Losers. Um, I have read some of the comics. N- not a lot of them, but it is pretty much fucking accurate. Like, the characters are dead on. Um, Idris Elba, before Idris Elba really... I think he was sort of on the bubble. He was just about to... 
to sort of be massive like he is now. Um, he hadn't done any of Luther or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It was sort of he was just boiling away and he was just about to get there. And he's fantastic as Rook. Uh, Chris Evans, one of the few comic book movies, apart from obviously The Avengers and all that, that he's fucking great in because he's nothing like him in it. He's just totally different. And the biggest surprise of that movie for me is, um, what's his name? From Speed 2 Cruise Control. Jason Patrick. Oh, yeah. Plays the bad guy and he's fucking insanely good. (laughs) He's insanely good in that movie as Max. Um, It's one of those roles that always... That role in particular for him takes me by surprise every time I watch it because he's just so fucking badass. When he's like, um, get me a crack team of 31 guys and get them over here now because we're going to destroy the world or something like that. And the guy behind him is like, all right, all right. And he's like, hey, Wade, get me a crack team of 21 guys because we're going to destroy the world. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's one he's like, Wade? And he just says it again. He's just like, oh, he's fucking great. He's great in that movie. And of course... I've got a lob on for Jeffrey Dean Morgan, so <laughs> big lob on for him. So yeah, Losers. It's it's one of those com- movies that I think they get everything right. Very rarely do they get everything right in a comic book movie, and I think in that one they did. Yeah, yeah, so, I agree. It's a good Losers. movie. It's a good movie, and it's just full of action and and Chris Evans, like an angle of the dangle. It's mm. great. <laughs> yeah. So my number four, uh, I've gone British again. It's from 2011. It's, uh, well, spoilers, the, like, three of my next four movies are movies that I've just raved on about in the past. Not all British, but I've raved on like a motherfucker. This one is a movie that's been, we all like this, written and directed by Paddy Constantine. Ah, uh, yeah. It yeah. is Tyrannosaur. I actually had a feeling that you were going to put this on, but I couldn't remember when it came out, and, and I couldn't be asked to Google it. I had a feeling you were going to put that on there. Yeah, because that's that, great. You always go on about that. I do always go on about it. Uh, I've only seen it once, <laughs> but <laughs> it's so fucking good. Uh, it's uh, Peter Mullen who yeah. plays uh, the sort of angry, violent, broken down, drunk. So he plays Peter Mullen. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Olivia Coleman uh, works in like a, yeah, a like charity him. shop. Everybody likes Olivia Coleman, uh, and he's kind of given the chance of redemption because she's a battered, abused wife. Uh, her husband is played by uh, Eddie Marson. Uh, that is a cracking all, cast. Oh, he's a creepy, that, that is horrible a, fucker in that movie. I almost had one of his movies in my list as well. But it's dark. Mm-hmm. It's fucking depressing. Yeah, the box makes it look depressing. Yeah. The cover. It's got a great name, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two likes dinosaur. You know, he doesn't look dinosaur. <laughs> But it's so fucking good. Uh, you may not get what you were looking for when you when you rent it in the first place because no. it's not a Jurassic Park. No, it off. is not. It is not. <laughs> but uh, you know, don't watch it if you're having a down day. I've said that before. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it is depressing. It is very bleak. It's very dark. But if you're wanting a movie with a proper bit of acting in it, mm-hmm. you can't go far wrong than this movie. Well, when, when, you, when you list the people you've listed there, yeah. 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 That's all like that's all in action, uh, acting, action, acting. <laughs> Fully, I've had a can. <laughs> well, you, you've had like one and a half cans to be fair. Yeah, that's way more than I normally I have, and I, I don't really drink this. But great. So, so it's your number four, my number four. Yes, let's see. Yeah, my number four is um, a Kevin Smith movie. Yeah, it's not Walrus. Or no. Tusk, or whatever it was called. I think, go on in. It's Red State. Oh, okay, that's not that one. That's, that's, uh, I thought you were going to take my number two there. No. Okay, go. What the fuck you got number two? I'll see you in a minute. All right. Well, uh, Red State, yeah. Um, again, like you were saying uh, before with this Aaron Paul TV show about a cult and all that, Red State was about a cult sort of thing. Interestingly enough, current events, Michael Parks recently died. And he was the the main guy in Red State. R- Red State is it? I don't think I've ever seen Red State. Have Red, I? Red State's the one where the three kids um, they end up in a compound, and it's basically there's like a family that live there, and it's a family, and they're all gun freaks. Okay. And they basically kidnap them. Well, they don't kidnap them because they trespass onto their their land, and uh, 
they they try to perform um, some religious rituals on them and all that. Oh dear. It doesn't get as fucking weird as Tusk, but it gets close. And John Goodman is like the local sort of law enforcement who comes to the compound because he knows there's something fucking crazy going on here. Mm -hmm. Him and Kevin Pollock, incidentally. And Kevin Pollock takes like a bullet to the head within about two minutes of being on screen. Which, oh, you know, was interesting. But yeah, um, <laughs> as movies go, a lot of people, even the diehard Kevin Smith fans, didn't really get on with this film because it's so left field from anything Kevin Smith's ever done, apart from Tusk, which was weird. But um, Michael Parks, who was in Dustle Dawn, he was the copper at the start of Dustle Dawn. Yeah. He, he's also in Tusk. I've always said, when him and Justin Long are just isn't back he, and forth. Isn't he in Kill Bill 2? And he yes. Goes, uh, the the um, Spanish fella. I am. Um, Bill, he shoot you in the head. Yeah. That guy. I can't do Spanish. Yeah. But yeah, um, Michael Parks is fucking phenomenal in that movie when he's given his like speeches and his monologues. Because that's what he's good at. You don't really, you don't really go to a Michael Park movie to watch him run around. You just go to watch him talk because he's fucking great at talking. He's, you know, he's the Daniel Day Lewis of monologuing basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, Red State's a great, great little movie that didn't really do anything, and I love it for that because it's now, although pretty much everything Kevin Smith does is cult. It's even more cult because even the Kevin Smith fans didn't get on with it. Yeah. So, yeah, Red State. Yeah, fair enough. That's a great movie. And it kind of showed you what he could do outside of dick and fart jokes. <laughs> well, that's kind of what he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, my number three is, um, yeah, I've, as I said, I have bloody bleated on about this movie quite a lot. It's from 2013. Uh, it stars Emma Thompson, Tom Hanks. It's Saving Mr. Banks. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, nobody watched that. Exactly. Only only Walt Disney himself watched that. And me. And you. And six-year-old girls. <laughs> and gays. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing that back. I'm getting that put on a t-shirt. That's the thing, is it? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's going on a t-shirt. I did say, uh, I was, I was re-listening to that episode. That I thought, oh, fuck me, I can't remember. <laughs> that's part of the reason I'm not drinking tonight. Sword forges. <laughs> I'll still not remember fucking anything I've said. But, yeah... I have the movie on Blu-ray. I've watched it countless times. You have it on Blu-ray? I've never noticed yeah. that. Oof. Okay. <laughs> You're allowed it. You're allowed it. Are you sure? Thank you. I mean, I've got a little box here with with Mannequin in it. With what? Mannequin. Remember Mannequin? I do not. Kim Cattrall, yeah? Yeah. All right. Okay. Her old ab fab. Sorry. Sorry. Fuck that, you. That, that was a Brigger move. That's brilliant. Just, just steal Brigger's jokes. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. <laughs> Um, and the shit jokes as well. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so Saving Mr. Banks, it's about, uh, well, the making of Mary Poppins. Yeah. I sounded really manly there, didn't I? It did, didn't uh, There you go. <laughs> there you go. But, fuck it. Uh, if, you, if, if I say Saving Mr. Banks to people, very, very, very rarely has anyone ever heard of it. Especially when you add in that Tom Hanks is in there, and then they'll be like, oh, you mean the World War II film? Or one, or, the or Captain War, Phillips, the World War thing. So even Captain Phillips, I don't think a lot of people saw Captain Phillips. No, no, it, it was nominated for an Oscar, but it didn't mm. do anything, not at all. Should have put that on my list. It's a good film as well. Yeah, never mind. But yeah, my number three, Saving Mr. Banks, and it is a good number three. Thank you very much. So my number three, you know, I'm a fan of Max Landis. Mm -hmm. It's not Chronicle, oh, because everybody saw Chronicle. Josh yeah, everybody had secret. Yeah. yeah, it was the movie that nobody should have saw, but everybody saw. Yeah, uh, you know I'm a big fan of Max Landis, mm -hmm. especially his writing. You know I'm a huge fan of Sam Rockwell because I love me some Sam Rockwell, and I'm also guilty pleasure Anna Kendrick because the Pitch Perfect movies and stuff. Okay. I kind of do love Anna Kendrick a little bit. All three of the these guys came in and they made a movie called Mister Right, in which Sam Rockwell was a hitman. But, you know, Sam Rockwell likes to dance. There's a whole video on YouTube about Sam Rockwell dancing through his movies because that's what he tends to do. Uh, I've seen Iron Man too. <laughs> he yeah. dances all over the damn place. He just It's what he does. So in uh, in Mr. Right, he plays a hitman that dance kills people. Dance kills. <laughs> he dance kills people, yeah. Um, he sees uh, the art of being an assassin much the same as Bally, I guess. And he dance kills people. 
It's a fantastically weird, silly, stupid movie. He, uh, come, he comes into the film, he's an assassin, but he's sort of a little bit jaded by the whole thing. He's kind of getting a little bit bored by it. And then he meets Anna Kendrick, who he instantly feels has... A, it's not like a power, but has the potential to be an amazing assassin. Because he, okay. he uses sort of musical fusion... When he's when he's dance killing people, I yeah, realize I'm not. I'm dance, not. He's fusing some MC Hammer with some rap shit. I, I, yeah, I realize I'm not selling it. It's a great fucking film. It's Max Landis silly, and he's like um, he does all these weird tricks with the guns and all that. But he's sort of got a bit of a moral code and everything. And then he gets he gets into her and he starts to fall in love with her. So he's deciding it's time to get out. But he realizes that she has the ability to be a fucking world class assassin because she has the dance killing skills. And there's one scene in the movie that I absolutely love. She's fucking pissed off her face, and he's like, he's drunk, but he's not mortal. And he kind of like, you don't see the scene coming. He sort of stood there in the kitchen and he's playing about with a knife and all that. And she's in the other side of the room, and he like, he just throws the knife at her, but she catches it. And it's like in between her fingers kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, whoa, how the fuck did you do that? And she's like, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> it was cool though. And then he like throws another one. And it's such a cool little film. Loads of good little action scenes. The humour is off the chain. It's I love it. It's a great movie. Sounds a bit like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but good. It's, mis- it's sort of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And it's sort of Gross Point Blank. Yeah, I like Gross Point it's Blank. It's a bit of both. You kind of lost me at the dance killing, though. It's not really dance killing. Is it killing. like sort of the the you know the drunk ninja fighting thing? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I suppose you could call it that. But he's sort of like he he goes in the room and he's about to have a fight, and he sort of he, he Sam Rockwell's the coat off because Sam Rockwell's a cool motherfucker, you know. <laughs> so he Sam Rockwell's the coat to the floor, and then he starts like Sam Rockwell dancing and stuff and like that, and the guy's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And then like. When he's doing his moves, it's like a jab. Let's say when he's throwing his arms, like throwing jazz hands, it's a jab to the face. Great film, you need to watch it. But like you say, it's one of those movies when I say, have you seen Mr. Right? People go, mm-hmm. what? It's it's Max Landis, and it's perfect. Well, I'd never heard of it. And Sa- You know I love me some Sam Rockwell. Oh, yeah. I, I did have like four Sam Rockwell movies, <laughs> and I ditched them all for that one because I love that film. Me and Lindsay watched it. And I, I won't lie, like it's a bit of a chick flick at the same time. So you've got that sort of romantic comedy. And it's sort of gross point. Black. Exactly, I. So. You kind of got that romantic comedy aspect going, and even Lindsay couldn't stomach it. <laughs> she kind of got to the end, and she's like, "This is just insane." She's like, "What the you fuck?" You know? Do you not think though, right, that because you've got so many, you know bloody superhero movies Marvel movies DC movies fucking yeah. Star Wars movies yeah. fucking this franchise this franchise this franchise just like fucking Fast 7 every two years uh, Fast and Furious every two Love years them. and all that I know Love you do them. I'm making a fucking point <laughs> I know I know do you not think that like because all of these are coming out and filling up the cinemas where they're taking up fucking five screens in the cinemas yeah. movies like this get lost in the mix well it, seem, it seems to be a big discussion right now I saw um who was it today? Was standing up for like Netflix. Oh, who was it? It was like it's over at Cannes. There's like this big thing going on, and it was it was a high profile actor, and they must have been given net Netflix a dose of shit, saying that movies don't really stand a chance now in the cinema because Netflix just puts them out there, like streaming, like instantly kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like you know this one with um, is it Brad Pitt, this War Machine or something? That's a series, isn't it? I don't know. Well, anyway, they're saying that Netflix is putting it out there instantly. Once it's made, it takes a couple of weeks, and then it's out. And they're saying it's sort of killing the movie and all that. But this high profile... I can't think who the fuck it was now. He was defending it, saying, look, if they didn't do that, if Netflix wasn't like that, or video on demand services like Vimeo and all that, the movies like, say, I don't know, Tom Tom Payton's um, Pandorica... Uh, they would never have a chance. Yeah, yeah. They would never have a chance if it wasn't for things like Netflix and Amazon Prime. You know, there's there's that kid that we've been speaking to, or like I've been speaking to a little bit on Facebook and all that. Made a movie for um, was it five hundred pound? He made a movie for yeah, yeah. That zombies have fallen, 
and then sells it to Amazon Prime for fucking, you know, thousands upon thousands. I don't know how much it was. But it's out. You know, that would never have made the cinema. Yeah. It would never have made the cinema because, like you say, unless it's a big budget thing that they're going to put in five or six different screens, they ain't interested. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying. But yeah, it's films do get lost, and, and yeah. There you go. I know. I rambled there, and I lost my point. It's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll come back to it. <laughs> I think about it two o'clock this morning. Three three episodes from now. So my number two is a movie from 2008 and it's a Kevin Smith movie right I'm, I'm struggling here it is Zack and Miri make a porno oh 2008 yeah I honestly had that way later than that no no 2008 uh yeah damn if you say Zack and Miri make a porno yeah you A get looked at like what the fuck are you saying to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and B, you get looked at. I have never fucking heard of that movie. What are you talking about? Definitely, but it's a, such a fucking good movie. I thought that was way, way past the ten year mark. Damn. Yeah, I wouldn't have had it, but yeah, that's a great film. Uh, that I, I actually put that in over another one, which you'll be gutted if you haven't put this on your list. But I thought it was way too obvious. Cop out. No. All right. I'm not going to say in case it's your number one. It probably or your number be. two. It probably will be. Uh, yeah, but Zack and Miri, it's a fucking funny as hell movie. Everybody puts in a great performance. Oh, definitely. You know, you've got some genuinely, genuinely laugh out loud funny oh, moments hi. in there. You know, it's just an, a corker of a movie. Plus it has it has one of the most quotable scenes ever in the, the first five minutes. Yep. With Brandon Ruth and uh, Justin Long. Yep. Just great, great... <laughs> Best scene ever. Like, kind of, it made you think, ah, oh, the guy from Superman's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Justin Long in that, uh, in that scene is amazing. I mean, the first time I watched that movie in that in that scene, I couldn't fucking breathe. I was oh, laughing was so great. hard. You oh, know, the... Holy shit, granny pennies. The, the bloody... the When he starts sort of rambling off, like, gay porn... Uh, movies that he's made like what, you, what you better shut your mouth before I fuck it <laughs> <laughs> and fucking more like Glenn and Gary flat out brick than Glenn and Ross's mouth or something like yeah, that yeah something fucking. like that something like that but it's so funny it's so fucking funny but basically the premise of the movie is uh, Zach and Miri live together they're roommates or, or flatmates or whatever you want to call it and they're broke and so they come up with an idea that uh, if they make a porno, then everybody's going to watch it. All the bills are paid. Yeah. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. So that's... Quite literally. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a great movie. It is a great movie. It is a great movie. I, honestly, I, I thought it was way past the 10 years. Damn, I should Google that. Yeah. Well, I hope it is. <laughs> it, came, it came when I fucking looked at 2008 movies. It, it doesn't matter, because one of mine is quite tenuous, so... I it. So what, what is your number two, then? My number two is Holbead. Oh. Yeah. Now, I think one of these you might you might, um, you might might have a go at me for. Because, technically, technically, it was, um, it was made in 2006. Oh. But it was released in the UK January 2007. So I'm having it. Okay. But... Because we're in the UK, that's fine. But I'm also, I'm also Hobie in it with a movie that came out this year. So oh. it's like both ends of the spectrum. Shit. Same director, same lead actor. It's Dito Montiel's A Guide to Recognising Your Saints, which you know I fucking love, with Shia LaBeouf and Robert Downey Jr., Channing Tatum. Fucking great movie. It's on the shelf. And... His other movie was 2017's Man Down. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Which yeah. I realise is a brand new movie, basically, so I guess people haven't really had a chance to see it, but it's not one people are going to see. It's not. It's well, I think it was only released in one cinema in the UK. Exactly. And it only... Oh, they, people loved sharing the fucking thing that it only... Shia's new movie only made £6.50. Ah, uh, yeah. Fuck that, off, it fuck was, off. It was everywhere. Well, basically, um, it, is, it is a brand new movie, but I fucking loved it. it. It affected me in a big bad way, which I didn't think a movie about that would. I'm not, you know, 
I'm not exactly patriotic or anything like that. You know that. You know I'm not. Like, I love the UK. I love Great Britain. But not to the extent where, you know, I'd go and fucking fight for it. Not not to that extent. Like, if... if What do they call it? When when you get forced to go and fight? The draft. If, if that shit happened, you know, you'd, you'd find me in another country. I'd be away. Oh, I'd be there with you. <laughs> but That's look, where having asthma comes out. Ex- exactly, which I have, so sweet. So do I. <laughs> but yeah. Tidy. Um, like, this, this movie... Um, we'll just be podcast correspondents. That would be cool. On Done. the front line, podcasting. Boom. Well, well, like in a, not boom, but in, a, in like a, a pope cage, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, yes. a pope mobile yeah. with the glass yeah. and stuff. Yeah. You know, bombs ain't getting through it. But yeah, um, if you haven't seen Man Down, which I'm gonna guess you haven't, it's a movie about a soldier who's sort of comes back from the war, and the the world around him is as fucked as it was at war. Yeah, safe. Yeah. It's not yep. spoilery because if you do watch it, it's got a fucking amazing twist towards the end that you just I didn't see it coming you just at all. Don't, you don't see it coming, and it absolutely knocks you off your fucking. F- it knocks you on the floor. It totally got me. I won't lie. I found myself crying at a fucking Shia LaBeouf movie. I, I didn't cry at it, but I was on the edge of my seat. Good. So good. Yeah. You know. And the other one is Guide to Recognizing Your Saints, which I have. Just ranted and raved for years, oh, hundreds of times. Hun- okay. I'm sure. I'm okay. sure if you go through the archive, there'll be like ten or twelve episodes when Christ I've talked about it. That. We've had seventy-five episodes. Yeah, you know. we have. I, I, this is the seventy-fifth. Yeah, it is. But yeah, um, both movies star Shia. They're both directed by Dito Montiel, who actually replies to me on Twitter. So, well, there you go. He won't do an indie talk though. Will he not? I think. I think he thinks he's above it. That's mean. Yeah, but he has made, like, six films. We haven't. We have done 75 episodes, though. Yeah. Which, in yeah. some worlds, is, like, what, three series? Four didn't, series, didn't five like series? Didn't, like, just have their 75th anniversary? Yeah, so... so we've done as many Batman. episodes as they have... Batman was 75 well, there you last go. year. There you go. So, fuck them. So, we've nearly beaten but Batman yeah, at it's 11, a, kind of. It's a, it's a Dito Montiel double... Guy to recognise in your sense, which, as I remember, was his first ever movie, and Man Down, which could be his last movie. Probably not. He'll, he'll do something else. No, you know what? Because it was a fucking good movie. It was! And and like you say, people were sharing oh, Shia's new movie. One person went to the cinema. People doing that. their fucking smiley, yeah. laughy thing. That, fuck off. Why Why do we celebrate that shit? Like, Why does anybody celebrate that? Because he's a bit of a douchebag, isn't he? So, no! Yes. He's just a bit eccentric. Yeah. Which is another word for douchebag. But yeah. Plus, he loves it. He, he subjects himself to the shit. And it's funny. I know he's doing it because that's his art, but I just I kind of felt like a wanker for even saying that. <laughs> right, so, okay. Yeah. So, we are down to the... To the is it the number ones now? Yeah. Down to the number ones. I think you know what my number one's going to be. So I think I'll, I do. I'll let you do yours. Yeah, you're not going to be surprised by this at all. Go on, then. Because I'm going to say uh, a name to you, Brendan Gleeson. Oh, you've been trying to get me to watch that for years. Yeah, the 2011's The Guard. The Guard, I I did see that, and I did I did go, no, I've not watched that, but you'll have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I rewatched it a few weeks ago. Yeah. It is so uh, fucking good. You know what it is, though? You're going to say Don Cheadle, aren't you? No. I mean, no. Don, Don Cheadle's a big factor, like... I'm not a massive Don Cheadle fan, but every time that I have actively went to watch The Guard, uh, I've always thought to myself, oh, all right, fancy watching In Bruges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I actually, it, it's better than In Bruges for me. Can't be. It is so good. It can't be it better. Is. You're an inanimate fucking object. We just going to have to watch it and find out, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to. That is one that I'll have to rectify, definitely. I do love In Bruges, though. The guard is good. It's the same people, though, isn't it? It's the same like producers or something like that. Same director. I don't know. Maybe it's Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, I like a bit of Brendan Gleeson. So, yeah, done. The guard. There's really no surprise there at all. Not really, nah. <laughs> you know, I didn't know if it was going to be like your number one, but I knew it was going to be like those two movies that straight away I knew were going to be in your list, and that was Tyrannosaur mm-hmm. and that. I just I knew a hundred percent. I was like, yeah, they're going to be in there. So I tried to stay away from them yep. because I haven't seen them. Well, you know, that's, <laughs> that would help. My number one. Go on then. Have, have, a, have, a, have a guess. Fan boys. No. Wow, no. But I did I did think about it. Mm. But who hasn't seen fan boys now? 
No one's seen Fanboys. So the people listening to this show have seen Fanboys. Well, you know, if they do what we tell them to do, which... Yeah. Is watch maybe. fanboys go and watch it maybe? Yeah, but no, I don't think I don't think many people have seen fanboys at mm. all. But my number one mm. is a movie that I literally stumbled upon. I think it was on Netflix. Was it Netflix? It might not have been Netflix, but I stumbled upon it. I'd never heard of it, even though it's got one of my favorite British actors in right now. Never heard of this movie. Love the guy that's in it. It's literally starring one guy. And it's Locke. Oh, shit. Right, okay. And yeah. I have told countless people about Locke. And the first response is usually, oh, Tom Hardy, I'll give that a watch. And then I say, yeah, he's in a car going from Wales to London, I'm assuming. Something like that, yeah. And they go, ah, oh, for the whole movie. Is he wearing a mask? Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I say, yeah, it's the whole movie in a car. He takes a few phone calls from Moriarty and Olivia Colman. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they go... From Moriarty and Hannah from... <laughs> and they go, so does he get out of the car? And I'm like, well, yeah, he gets out of the car at the end. And they go, ah, right, so what else happens? And I'm like, he's in a car taking phone calls. And I realise I'm not selling it to anyone right now. You sold it, to be fair, you sold it to me like that. And it, I watched it. It's Tom Hardy in a car taking phone yep. calls... And it's fucking amazing. It is. And you spend the whole movie... I found myself, who's going to phone him next? Like, I'm sitting there watching it going, who's going to phone him next? Is it going to be The Sun? Which was Tom Holland, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, The Sun was Tom Holland, who's now Spider-Man, for fuck's sake. You know, Jesus. Like, they you never... You That's never another time you made me cry, then, bastard. Because... Him. I always, I always make you cry. No, him. Because when he's when there's one of the moments in the movie where he's speaking to he's speaking to um, Tom Hardy, oh, and he's, he's going, he's saying, oh, "We'll we'll keep it. We'll keep, it's the football. We'll keep the Aye. football recorded for you. We won't watch it until you get home." And that's after his wife has said, Aye. "Fuck off." Aye. And yeah, I I was a blubber and idiot at that moment. It's mad, isn't yeah. it? It is. So you've got you've got Tom Holland on the phone. You've got Olivia Coleman on the phone. You've got his wife. I can't remember who plays his wife. Because Olivia Coleman's it's the, another the known pregnant, name, like um, the, Olivia Coleman's the pregnant girlfriend, isn't she? Yes. And then um, you've got Moriarty on the phone, and it, it's just such a fucking great movie of of him slowly but surely unraveling, just starting to lose his fucking shit. Oh, it's Ruth Wilson. Ruth Wilson. There uh, she was in um, Luther. Right. So he's like he's keeping a cool head the whole time. He's, he's basically going to lose. You know, he's lost his fucking job. He knows that. As he's lost his wife, he's probably going to lose his entire family, and he's going to see this woman that he slept with once. Because why not? And yeah, that is the movie, and it's fucking awesome. And those scenes when he's looking in the mirror, talking to his dead dad, who, who you don't see by the way. He's not. He's not a ghost or anything. They wouldn't take away that but when he's talking to his dad in the mirror and he's getting so fucking frustrated at his dad just Tom Hardy can fucking act mm-hmm. and then he makes Mad Max I've still never seen that all the way through Ugh. Ugh. but yeah uh, number one nice British movie Lock yep good choice loved it absolutely loved it and that was my number one the moment you said yeah, that last ten years. That was my number one. See, the guard was my number one. As soon as <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be there. I just didn't know where you would have it because <laughs> it, it's a yeah. He's always going on about that movie. So yeah, that'll be not. It's the right of anything. <laughs> so that's that was our top five. Do you, do you have any honourables that you want to? Not real well, fanboys. Yeah, fanboys would definitely be all. The only uh, I had two honourables that um, I really had trouble leaving off. I had End of Watch with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And um, Michael Pena, but people did see that. It just didn't do as well as we thought it would. Because I thought it was going to be massive. I thought it was going to be huge. Great film. There is one. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, Take Shelter, Michael Shannon. Yeah, that's yeah, a good definitely. One. That that could that could have made. Hey, that's a good good fucking movie. Mm. And um, my last one was Safety Not Guaranteed, which Never is a great movie with Mark Duplass and Aubrey Plaza. I, I like Aubrey Plaza, but. Yeah. I know the name, I can't think of her. She is um, Scott Pilgrim's sister. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. okay. Yep. And uh, basically, she works for a newspaper and she gets all the shitty stories. She doesn't want to do them anymore. So she finds an advert in a paper that says, uh, 
looking for a looking for a companion from time travel. Safety not guaranteed. So obviously she gets interested with it and she's kinda like, what the fuck's this? you know, and she takes it to her head and the head is like, Yeah, go and see him. He's clearly a nutcase. So she goes and slowly but surely kinda falls in love with him. But you also because he's quite eccentric and the way he puts things across with his time travelness, you're not sure if he actually is a time traveller. And yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna tell you the end. But it's a great fucking film and it's funny as hell. But like not all the time, but when it wants to be. Plus it's Aubrey Plaza. She's great. So yeah, that was my other honorable mention. So that's pretty much episode seventy five. That's been episode seventy five. Yeah. Another another four hour epic. It's not that bad, is it? Yeah, it'll be about two hours twenty. No, we didn't do a big Arnie section on this one. No, so, we know. we have to bring that back. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll um with all your trivia and tidbits. The trivia was good. Was trivia was good. Trivia. I was just gutted, like when I was editing, and I, I had that picture in my head of you having like twenty white pages of notes, yeah, and then thinking, ah, oh, God, he could have really used them. I could have, but then we did. Uh, you know, I did say at the start when we started talking about that movie, if you haven't seen it, what's the matter with you? So mm. we're going into it assuming that people have seen it, so you don't really need to go through yeah. the entire plot. We're not going in dry. I did feel like a bit of a prick for writing down the entire plot of the movie, though. I've done that before. It's fine. I've done that. I've done do? it plenty of times. It's done now. <laughs> but we do need to bring that back. We will bring that back uh, in a couple of episodes' time or something. Most definitely. Definitely. 100%. So are we good with that, episode 75? I'm happy with that. Cool. Well, I will find an outro. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. So Pete Dunn's winning the title. I think so. It's going to be a good match, mind. It's going to be a great match. Yeah. I'm. I'm I don't watch NXT, and I've, I've not you watched know, any takeovers. I've kinda, I've, I watch the takeovers, but. I've kind of gone off NXT a little bit. I've kind of gone off like all of it, yeah. except, except for Raw. <laughs> Smackdown's fucking shit. You're not missing anything. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm hoping none of my guys win points this week so that I can just be like, yeah, I'm done with Smackdown. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there will be some good matches of Backlash. You, Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler is going to be a good match. AJ and I Kevin Owens. I don't, I don't like that match up though because they're bringing they're bringing uh, Nakamura in, who's like the big I am. It's it's Nakamura, you know. Yeah. He comes in with a certain amount of gravitas, and the first thing they do is give him Ziggler. But they've also given him a name like a Aye, the like artist. the artist, Aye. which is so fucking shit. Aye. That but, is shit. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good match though, and AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens is going to be a good match. match. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely watch that. Um, I really. I really, really want the um, Breeze Angle and Tyler Breeze to win the tag titles. I don't, because then Matt gets points. Oh. And he cheated on that one, so still salty on that. <laughs> still salty. Yeah. yeah. Although, I do, I can change Strowman, and I could look at who's going to be in all these title fights, and I could pick one of them. You could well do. But I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't pick. Well, I wouldn't pick somebody who's just become number one contender because that's cheating. Well, it's not cheating. That's how it fucking works. <laughs> You've got until the kickoff show starts on. Well, unless you want to pick an NXT guy, you've got. You've got until the kickoff show starts on Sunday night, which right. is midnight here in the UK. Right. And you can you can swap out Strowman for anybody you like that's in the WWE. I quite like Strowman though. I, I, I yeah, can't he's feel, injured. I feel bad for him. But what if I drop him and then somebody else picks him up? Well, that's just that's. But he's out for six months. He won me points at my first paper. But he's out for six months. You, you you can't just not drop him because you say, "Oh, bless him, I'm loyal to him." He, I am loyal to my guys. <laughs> So far, I've only got two guys in my draft who haven't won points, and that's because SmackDown hasn't had a paper yeah. yet. Who have you got on your AJ? Uh, he, well, AJ. he's going to. I think he's going to win it. Do you think he'll beat him? I think he is. That would be cool. I wouldn't mind that because May, I mean, maybe not match? because yeah. Oh sweet. Maybe not because Owens just won it back, and it doesn't really make sense. But then, when does that stop the WWE? Yeah. So, what about, I, but I really do think that AJ's going to win it. What about Corbin? Has he got a chance? Who's he, he fighting? Sami Zayn. Oh yeah, Corbin's winning. Good. Sweet. Oh yeah, Corbin's winning Corbin's, that. I suppose Sami Zayn is a job I know. Yeah. 
Sammy Zane's a fucking jobber. Yep. And a knob. So but, yeah, episode 75 is done. We are off. Sorry about the wrestling talk, folks. But um, it's the only time I get to do it. So well, yeah. So bye. Boom.